This is Hallmark University Thursday Night Lines. Presented by Jack in the Box. It is a beautiful night for football in San Antonio, Texas. The weather has cooled, but the matchup is as hot as ever. Number three, O'Connor, against number six, Churchill, in our Hallmark University TNL Top Ten. And you're going to watch them live on Thursday Night Lights. Good evening, everybody. I'm Don Harris, along with my broadcast partner, Chuck McAtinick. Chuck, we talked about the schedule. We were fired up about it. These two teams weren't the two last teams standing in the playoffs last year, but pretty close to it. You know, when we were devising the schedule at the beginning of the year, that was the big key for Hallmark University TNL this year. Let's get the best matchups we can get. And here we are, week two. How can you beat O'Connor and Churchill? Perennially, two of the greatest programs in this entire city. You know they're going to be playoff bound at year's end. And here we are, we get a chance to look at them and get a early glimpse to what we're going to see when these two are in the playoffs later this year. We saw O'Connor a year ago. They were led by Roel Sanchez. He leads them again this year, and he's better than ever. You know, this guy was one of the area's best quarterbacks a season ago. Not the tallest guy on the planet, but he absolutely can beat you with his feet and do not go to sleep on his arm. He's deadly accurate. He had four TD passes in their opener a week ago. This guy can beat you in many different ways. On the defensive side, O'Connor has two of the best DBs in the entire city, if not the state. One of them is Zaire Taylor. Yeah, you know, this is one guy that's already committed to the U of H, so, you know, that speaks to his skill set. But on the other side, Millard Bradford, I mean, we're talking, Don, possibly two of the best tandem cornerbacks in this entire area on one team. These guys absolutely are electric on the edges, but this O'Connor defense overall may be one of the best in the entire city. The Churchill Chargers started with a week one win in the Gucci Bowl dominating Clark. How dominant was this performance? <laughs> Derek Perez going 14 of 14. Hey, nothing like somebody giving you the keys to the car and you go out and go absolutely perfect with a great quarterback rating in your first ever, you know, situation where you're leading your own team. Derek Perez obviously is giving the Chargers a lot of hope that they can do some really great things this year. This young man really blowing up a week ago. They had their best year last year in 25 years. They were led by Court Jaquist. This is his little brother who's even bigger. Yeah, he's got the better measurables. He's a little taller. Of course, Court played linebacker and is now at the University of Texas. But Seth is a defensive end. Still learning some of the nuances as a junior on the pass rush. He's great against the run, but this guy you know, you talk about a full season as a junior and then as a senior, look out. This guy's going to be on everybody's recruiting radar. Well, in early September, usually it's about what, 100 degrees, but it's a gorgeous night for football. Let's go down to the field for our ASCO game time weather in Mike Hernandez. Mike? Well, you 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 just hit the nail on the head there. Normally, we're sitting around 100 degrees. The, the actual temperatures on the field running between 110 and 120. That's, that's how it feels like to the players, and especially when you add all that equipment that they have on. Tonight, it's a different story. Beautiful, beautiful. Feels more like, like October. 79 degrees out there for game time temperature and a nice breeze, partly cloudy skies. Just a beautiful night to play football. Hey, Mike, we know O'Connor has two Division I offensive linemen, but you say Churchill's got one of their own. That's right. They got Ryan Booth. Now, Ryan Booth is a commit to Rice, and he is going to be uh, on the left tackle position, and I think that is going to be a key position to watch tonight. I think if he wins the battle against a very strong O'Connor defensive line and some very, very fast linebackers, you already talked about their cornerbacks, I think they have a chance. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night for Churchill. All right, we got some big boys in this one, and it's a big-time matchup. Churchill and O'Connor on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights on the CW35. Closed captioning for tonight's game is sponsored by DNA Reference Lab. You're watching Hallmark University Thursday Night Lines, presented by Jack in the Box. Welcome back to Comalander Stadium, everybody. It's Hallmark University 
Thursday Night Lights, O'Connor and Churchill. Time for our keys to the game. Chuck, we start with O'Connor. Yeah, for Coach David Molesky's squad, the first thing they want to do is win the field position game. Secondly, turnovers. They want to get some. They don't want to give any away. And lastly, same thing with big plays. They want to get theirs, but they want to limit them as well. All right, so what does David Molesky want to see? First of all, we're going to come out and try to execute better than what we did last week. Didn't get started real well. Uh, but we're going to try to figure out what, what Churchill's doing to us and then, and then try, to, try to move our, our pawns, so to speak, around to, to figure out what we can do to move the football. Chuck, Churchill was great against Clark, but O'Connor is not Clark. What are the keys for the Chargers? Well, again, it seems like this is every week the refrain. No turnovers. They want to play a really clean game tonight with also no penalties. But for Churchill, they want to control the pace and flow of this game, especially on offense, and then keep O'Connor's offense off the field. Yeah, we asked Ron Harris, how do you contain this powerful O'Connor team? Well, I, I don't know if you truly contain them. You just hope to limit their possessions. And that's like, again, you know, our best defense will be our offense if it's successful, um, you know, and keeping their offense on the sideline. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is try to be great tacklers in space and don't give them extra opportunities because of mistakes you do and inflict upon yourself. All right, it looks like a great one. O'Connor and Churchill, when we come back, we'll have our national anthem and we'll kick it off on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. You're watching Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights, presented by Jack in the Box. We're back at Comalander Stadium. Welcome to Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. What a matchup tonight. O'Connor and Churchill, a battle of top 10 teams in our Hallmark University TNL top 10 this week. O'Connor's ranked third. Churchill is ranked sixth. Chuck, we were not lying when we said this is our best schedule ever. And you know, what's interesting in talking to both coaches and how much they respect one another's programs and what they're trying to do, I mean, it's really cool. You know, we are talking to Ron Harris earlier this week, the Churchill coach, and he said, honestly, before the season began, I thought it would be Judson and O'Connor, the two top teams in the area, and he's going to get a chance to look at them firsthand tonight. Yes, yeah, Steele will have something to say about that. They have some big-time uh, D1 prospects, especially in the defensive backfield with Caden Stearns and others leading the way. Stearns is, when you look at Rivals Top 100, he's right at the top of the list. He's already committed to the University of Texas. They've got a Baylor commit and an Oklahoma commit, Oklahoma State commit back there at Steele as well. But these two DBs at O'Connor High School, when you talk about Millard Bradford, TCU is all over him. When you talk about Zaire Taylor, already committed to the University of Houston, number two and number seven are going to be great to watch tonight. And on the Churchill side, too, remember, this was a squad, too, that – really kind of found itself as the season went along. And then once they got to the postseason, wreaked all kinds of havoc, and they were one of the last two teams standing at the end. O'Connor, a great program. You can see our colors. Let's send it down for our national anthem. We turn it over to our public address announcer, Neil Upchurch. American flag rifle guard and the Texas State flag rifle guard, our cadet captain, Jesus Flores, and cadet captain, Nathan Hadley. Ladies and gentlemen and students, please remain standing and remove your hats. Conducted by Churchill Director of Bands, Tony Ruiz. We remember the victims of Hurricane Harvey, and we honor America as the Churchill High School Band plays our national anthem.
Thanks for watching the Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights pregame show. Stay tuned for tonight's first half kickoff. The O'Connor Panthers are fired up and so are we. It's Churchill and O'Connor on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Welcome back to Comalander Stadium, everybody. I'm Don Harris along with Chuck McAtenick, Mike Hernandez down on the sidelines, and that is Gary Molesky. His squad, one of the best in the entire city, and they know it this year, very experienced. But they'll get a battle tonight from the men in black. Churchill started well last week against the Clark Cougars. Did I not say David Molesky? I said, Gary, that's his dad. No. My fault. No. That's how old no. I am. Oh, I feel no. you, bro. No. No. <laughs> but the Chargers started no. strong Chargers, against no. No. Clark in the Gucci Bowl. And so we expect to have a good one. Last week, what a great game, Chuck, huh? Not a bad way to kick off Thursday Night Lights, and we follow it up with this. Yeah, I mean, we had Taft. We had Lee a week ago. Looked like Taft was going to win that ball game, and then all of a sudden, Lee got it going in the second half and came back and swiped that game at the very end. And we're expecting another pressure cooker tonight. And obviously, you know, with these two teams so much ahead of them, you know, the winner's going to feel really good, and obviously the loser's going to not feel so great. But so much football left to be played once these guys start their district schedule. And as we said at the onset, we fully expect both of these programs to not only get to the playoffs, but Make a deep push, too, once they get there. All right, tonight's first half kickoff is sponsored by Ernest Roofing. Ernest Roofing, they've got you covered. Michael Lisley will kick it away to Malik Fletcher and Luke Ro Rosas, who are back for the Chargers. Lisley, one of the best kickers in town a year ago. First team all district for the Panthers. And he kicks it away. It'll be Fletcher who will field it at the four. Fletcher takes it across the 20, still on his feet, bullying his way to the 24-yard line, and that's where the Chargers, Chargers will start first tonight with Derek Perez. We talked earlier in the pregame, 14 of 14 for 187 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and also ran for two scores. It doesn't get much cleaner than that. No, I mean, and just a junior... <laughs> I'd say if the kid had any nerves last week, he certainly didn't show it. And then not only that, you know, like you see a lot in the high school level, he can beat you with his feet too. Really good yards per carry there. And again, so this is a young man kind of growing up inside the program and a lot of intangibles with this young man too. And he's going to have his hands full tonight. A lot of good players on the O'Connor defensive side, as we said, but they are a little young on that side. So we'll keep an eye on that. Perez is going to throw on first down. He's got Fletcher. It's caught for a first down. Right off the bat, Churchill hits O'Connor in the mouth with a 12-yard slant play as we take a look at the Chargers starting lineup. Keep an eye on Ryan Booth, number 67. And also Diego Vela at running back will get most of the load on the ground. Jonathan Alva and Fletcher, the favorite targets. And Austin Castilleja played a lot last year for that very good Churchill team that went all the way to the regional final. First and 10, Fletcher in motion. Perez throws again, he's got Vela out of the backfield. He's got another first down across the 45, inside the 45 before Millard Bradford brings him down. Okay, so you start your high school career as a starting quarterback and all you're doing is you're 16 for 16. <laughs> you're 14 for 14 last week and a quick two for two tonight. And early showing that they're not afraid to pass the ball. It's going to give O'Connor something to think about in this one. Two Kiyobasa smoked meets first downs right off the bat for the Churchill Chargers as they get the, the sign in from the sidelines. I tell you what, going 14 for 14 will build your confidence. And he come out slinging. He's 16 for 16 on the year. Perez looking to run it this time. Gets a block from Vela. He gets shut down quickly as Bradford is there to stop him for no gain. Yeah, really good pursuit by the O'Connor defense that time, having none of that, shucking those blockers out in front and coming down and really stopping that for about a one-yard gain. Andrew Sherrick checks in at fullback.
for the Chargers. We'll set up a second down and eight inside O'Connor territory as they still look to solidify the play call. It's Fletcher in motion again. They hand it to Diego Vela. Picks up about three across the 40 down to the 39. The Diego Vela show last year on Hallmark University TNL. It's kind of down on the depth chart and they had some injury situation going on and Diego got a chance and really showed up well in that game last year and ran the heck out of the football. Got some opportunity this summer during training camp, had some more injuries and kind of solidified himself as the guy back there. There you see big Price and Greer, the nose tackle for O'Connor in on that last tackle. Third down and six for the Chargers. Fletcher in motion again. Hands to Fletcher and oh, what a hit by Millard Bradford. The TCU commit. We were told before the game, look out, he might be the best player on the field and boy, oh boy, did he lay the wood on that one. Yeah, with all apologies to Mr. Stearns up there in Steel Country, I mean, this kid is right there with him. I mean, another outstanding edge guy. And Fletcher's one of those guys for Churchill. He's a home run hitter and boy, he squared him up and took him down nicely. Fill the gap and squared him up. Bradford is back to receive this punt. He's going to let it go, and it's a nice kick. Can the Chargers keep it in play? And it looks like it's a touchback. Both officials pretty clear that that one either broke the plate or the player was in the end zone when he knocked it back into the field of play. So Churchill threatens but can't quite get on the board, and so now you'll see David Molesky's squad for the first time on offense, led by Roel Sanchez. He had a good week a week ago as well, 13 for 19 for 194, four touchdown passes, one rushing, no interceptions. And this guy does everything. I mean, he's our scholar athlete, so it tells you about what he's got going on upstairs. That's what you want in your quarterback. He keeps on first down, nothing doing there as the Chargers bust through to make a tackle. It's number 36, Matt Elizondo, firing through on a nice play from the defense of the Chargers. Both teams kind of feeling each other out there, and I'd see a little of that go on as this game, you know, gets wound up here in the first quarter. Brandon Butler, the backup quarterback, checks in at tight end. We saw Bradford lining up in the backfield. Trey Patterson nicked up. He was their leading rusher last week. He's, we were told pregame he was a game time decision, but he was probably going to play. Instead, we're seeing Bradford. There's a little confusion. O'Connor wants a timeout. We'll take it with him. 0-0 from Kamalander. All right, welcome back. We're joined on the field by Hallmark University's president, Brent Fessler. How are you, sir? Hey, Mike, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing great. So how are you enjoying the the kind of the environment out here? It's crazy, oh, isn't it? This is awesome. Great energy, and thanks for the weather tonight. Uh, it was not This is incredible. <laughs> so for, for folks that don't know Hallmark University and know all that you do, can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. We're a uh, nonprofit university founded here in San Antonio for San Antonio. Uh, we provide professionally focused degrees in about half the time, all right, and we uh, serve San Antonio's uh, four core industries in aerospace and IT and cybersecurity wow. and uh, healthcare and in business. And uh, you know, I want to uh, recognize all the folks around the players. We've got some incredible athletes out on the field tonight, uh, but you and I know that we can't just decide to go out there and be an athlete tonight. It takes a lot of preparation, but it also takes a lot of support around them. There's partners, there's coaches, there's teachers, uh, all, all pushing these athletes to do great things. And in higher ed, it's really important for us to do that as well, uh, for each individual to achieve their greatest and become all that God's made them to be. And so we, we create that environment, that culture at Hallmark University, uh, high engagement, 
supporting, cheerleading, uh, encouraging, holding our students accountable, and uh, they head off to great success. Well, wow. okay, so now folks want more information on this because you said a lot there, and I know a lot of, you piqued a lot of interest. How do people get in more information? Yeah, hallmarkuniversity.edu. Uh, they can chat with uh, some of our team there. Uh, they can call us at 690-9000, but best yet, so we could see your face, just drop by for a tour, campus on I-10 and campus at the airport. All right. Brent Fester, thank you so much, President of Hallmark University, our title sponsor. Back to you. Thanks, Mike. Two big plays, first from Jalen Hughes, and then second from Miller Bradford has the O'Connor Panthers knocking on the door already. Two giant plays as Sanchez by some time, got a man wide open and just overthrew Jalen Hughes, had him out there with nobody guarding him. And Chuck, you can see right off the bat just how potent this offense is. As we take a look at that starting line. Brandon Brown, number 75, weighs 295. He's a big time division one commit. On the other side, they've got another guy who's just a sophomore Logan Parr, who's just as good. You see Grayson Lee, number 80, a wide receiver who went to state in the long jump. This team is loaded with athletes. Offense, number 55, five-yard penalty. Still a second down. Brock Pittman, a familiar face on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Yeah, Don, and as much love as Brandon Brown's going to get, obviously an all-district first teamer and a team captain over there on the left side, and then you mentioned Logan Parr. I mean, Ramirez, Simonis, and Chavez, I don't know if those guys get enough love right there in the middle. I mean, this offensive line is veteran. They're all heady. And obviously, they're the guys that make this offense go up front. That they do after the penalty. It is second and 15 for Sanchez. Scrambling. Got some room if he wants to run. Man. Did a nice job of picking up the first down and getting down the sidelines. Chuck, the way he kept looking to his right, he froze the defenders knowing, I think, that he was going to run it the whole time. It's just such a good feel for the position. I mean, we saw this a lot last year for Roel. I mean, he's got his head downfield, as you said. Had a couple of guys, could have taken a shot, but decided, you know what, I'm going to go safe here. We're moving the football, and he was able to make up those yards on the penalty and then some. Into the Miracle Mattress red zone, first and 10, first and goal, rather, for the Panthers. They'll spot it at the nine. Bradford in the backfield with Sanchez. And looks like there was a bit of a bust there as Olthen Oliva gets in for the tackle. But that might be one of those confusion type plays with Patterson out and Bradford in the backfield. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. It looked like it was a little bit of confusion on that one. And right, we'll just Lived to fight another day, lost a couple on the play, so Oliva doing a really nice job taking advantage of the fact you got a bust, but you still got to make a play. Second down, this is Bradford. Bradford leaps a defender down inside the five to the four yard line. Luke Rosas with the tackle, but there you see the athleticism of Bradford. At everybody, top of everybody's list, as a defensive back, as a recruit, but now he's playing offense, which is not his game, but look at him go airborne to get to the four. Now we'll see what Coach Hooper, the offensive coordinator for O'Connor has in his bag of tricks. You got third down here, just inside the five yard line. And really isn't it interesting, Don, they had that little bubble screen to kind of get this drive going. So lots for the Chargers to think about here as O'Connor tries to stick it in on third down. Castillo, Hughes, and Lee split right, but we've got a flag down. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. And third and goal from the five, a little different. Now it'll be third and goal from the 10. We'll see what Coach Molesky has drawn up. Drawn up. Yeah, reaches for the chapstick, so I don't think he liked that particular penalty. But he was really hoping for a quick start tonight. I mean, he thought that that was really kind of the bugaboo last week. And he was really thrilled because he thought, man, you know, MacArthur was a much better team than they were a season ago, and they ended up winning that game pretty well. Sanchez looks to his right, looking in the corner, and it's knocked away a great defensive play by the Chargers. Jalen Hughes, the intended receiver, but a Charger got there late. And I think it was Nico Espinoza who knocked it out of his hands right as he was going to 
catch the football for a touchdown. Yeah, double coverage there in the back edge. 28 down there as well. But as you said, Nico getting that right hand up there and finishing the play and able to keep O'Connor out of the end zone and hold for a field goal attempt. How about that camera work by our man Bryce down on the sidelines? Michael Lissy on to attempt a field goal here on fourth down. The spot is up, good. The kick is up and good, and the uh, O'Connor Panthers are on the board. They lead the Churchill Chargers 3-0 at Comelander Stadium here. You're watching Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Welcome back again. We are on the field right now, and I'm joined by Roland Sandoval. You might recognize this gentleman. He is the band director for O'Connor High School. How are you? I'm doing great. 29 years you've been doing this, and yes, you said 20 years is 20 year anniversary at O'Connor. Yes, sir. Congratulations. We're excited, yeah. It's a special year for everybody since the school opened 20 years ago. It's quite a, it's going to be a, an eventful year all year long. So you're the only band director they've ever had? No, 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 no. We've had a, a great team that have come through uh, over the last 20 years, but this team has been together uh, 17 years, so it's uh, one of the most uh, tenured band director teams around. So we're excited to be back and together again. So real quick, what are we going to be doing? We're doing a, a jungle theme show called Welcome to the Jungle. Different soundtrack from different uh, jungle theme movies. It's going to be really cool. Look forward to seeing that. Awesome. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mike. Luke Rosas with the touchback. So Churchill will take over at the 25-yard line. And we'll see Derek Perez again. You remember that special season that Churchill had a year ago. It was the best season that the school's had in like 25 years. Uh, remember they lost uh, Josh Pollard before the season and they dedicated the season to him and they went all the way to the regional final and along the way Jordan Billups got hurt and this sophomore came in and played terrifically in the playoffs. Turns and heads hands to Diego Vela on first down and Chuck we've talked a lot about him going 14 for 14 last week but he also can run the football very well but it'll be tough tonight as you look at this O'Connor defense there's the guys up front and we talked about Zaire Taylor and Miller Bradford and we've already seen what great athletes they are on the defensive side of the ball but this kid's wheels are as good as his arm yeah, and he's getting some help up front too I mean as we've seen already in this game, I mean, when he's dropping back, he's had some nice pockets to throw through. So you go across the board with Prusky, Getter, Efron, Green, and then big old Ryan Booth over there on the right side. You got big fellas like 32, Diego Vela, also capable of throwing some chip blocks in there. He's had some nice throwing lanes, but again, <laughs> what a start to a season. I mean, who starts the year 16 for 16? <laughs> yeah, he still hasn't thrown an incompletion. Churchill, like O'Connor earlier in the quarter, had a little bit of confusion. It's not week one, but it's still very early in the season and communication and play calls. Still a little rough at this time of the year. Yeah, and remember, I mean, these games, especially these non-district games are used, you know, these coaches are trying to figure out exactly what they have so that they are firing on all cylinders when they get ready for league play. And we both know how tough each of these districts are over at north side and northeast all right so they switch it up a little bit and perez will have trips to his left including fletcher and liam copa bianco austin castilleja goes into the backfield it's fletcher again on that same slant that we saw to start the game and it's another huge game for the chargers really like what they're doing off the play action stuff you have to go with the three wides and then you've got those guys running downfield but all eyes are in the backfield because you don't know if they're going to do a little read option and six just kind of slips over the middle and another ball right on the button that's another kielbasa smoke meets first down for the chargers now inside o'connor territory Four minutes left here in the first. Vela's got it, tries to bounce it upside, outside, but nowhere to go. 
And Don, we talk about this O'Connor defense. You know, last year at this time, they only have one starter from this year or from last year at this time to now. And they had five when they were playing in that Judson playoff game last year. So still some youth. They've got some veteran guys and obviously they've got some talent. But a lot of these guys are really getting their first varsity snaps. But, you know, in a program like O'Connor, you know they stack them and rack them. So you've got some guys that graduated and it seriously is the next man up. All right, second down and nine for the Chargers. It's a hand to Austin Castilleja, and he's brought down maybe after a game of one. Grant Rustin in on the tackle, and he's made the last couple of tackles. It is time to tell you about our cheer challenge. It's sponsored by the All-Star Cheer Challenge, sponsored by CPS Energy. It's underway. And if you want your cheer squad, like those O'Connor Panthers, to be in it, the two top vote getters will get a $1,000 and $500 grant. The top four squads will have the chance to cheer on the nationally televised U.S. Army All-American Bowl or the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB, both on January the 6th. Third and eight for the Chargers. Perez running for his life, and he's sacked. Flag flies. Brian Reed may have grabbed him around the head or neck, huh, Chuck? Sure looked like it, Dom, but it was an absolute jailbreak and really a foul. Face mask on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. And really a poor break for O'Connor because, man, they really snuffed that out. Saw it coming all the way. and Just a great play. Had a bunch of guys get in there. and You're 34. You're trying to grab for anything in there. and You're just trying to get the guy down on the ground, but... Yeah, so it's a tough break for the O'Connor Panthers on that particular play. Wow, what a change that is. Instead of punting the football behind midfield, you're now at the 25. Perez wants to take advantage. Throws another completion. It's caught to Lee. He may have fumbled. Let's see how they rule it. They're going to rule it incomplete. Liam Capobianco as... Miller Bradford was there to make the tackle. And that's going to be the first incompletion of the season for Perez, and it should have been a completion. Oh, indeed. I mean, the ball is right on the button, but yeah, it was a great call by the officials. I mean, you got to be able to make a football move there. And he had the ball, but before he could get his second step down, that ball was already loose. All right, so it'll be second down and 10 for the Chargers at the 25. Churchill likes to run the slant. Pretty good at it. <laughs> and this time they've got Fletcher on the right-hand side. Instead, they keep it on a little zone read. And guess who? Miller Bradford is there to blow it up. He's also there along with Donovan McKnight. Well, Donovan McKnight, the senior linebacker and friends. And you can see they're starting to bring some pressure, starting to gamble a little bit on that side of the ball, trying to see if they can make something happen. They've guessed right twice with those blitzes, and that's what you try to do as a defense, you know? Give them a bunch of different looks and never let them know you're coming. And they've come twice, and both times they've been there and they've gotten home. Got burned, though, once on the face mask, face mask penalty. Third and 14 now, backed up to the 29. As Perez throws that slant again. It's caught by Copa Bianco inside the 20 taking us inside our miracle mattress red zone Kobe Bianco doing a really nice job there Don too, getting down the uh, getting down on the ground because Zaire Taylor was coming and bringing the load short of the first down so the Chargers Nick Falzone will try a field goal here Nick Falzone his father the Spurs strength coach all right. Well, let's see what kind of legs he's got. Weight. I'm sure it's pretty good. <laughs> and he's a lefty. Snap is high, but a good hold, but it's blocked. And look at Miller Bradford. He's going to score. Miller Bradford with unbelievable athleticism to keep that ball alive and scoop it up and score. Did he score? <laughs> Did his teammates score? I guess it really doesn't matter, but, well, you're not kidding. I mean, that's unbelievable. It sure looked like Churchill was going to be able to at least fall on this football. 
Big 77 got through to block it. That's Marcus Guerra. But here's the most impressive part of this play. Watch Bradford, bottom of your screen. Watch his left hand. Well, it's tough when you can get some pressure right up the middle like that as a kicker. You really don't have much of a chance. 77 doing an outstanding job of blowing up right up, uh, right up after that snap. Michael Lissy will attempt the extra point and try to make it 10-0 O'Connor. And it is up and it is good. We'll take another look at that when we come back. But O'Connor in control, 10-zip. Welcome back to Thursday Night Lights here at Comalander Stadium. And I want you to watch Millard Bradford. Watch his left hand. Couple things to watch here. The athleticism to, boom, just reach down and knock it to keep it alive and then to scoop it up and score. And Chuck, there's something to watch here at the end of the play too, huh? Well, I don't know. I mean, we'll find out. <laughs> did he did drop he, it? He did. He dropped it on the one yard line. So I don't know if he gets credit for the touchdown or if, is that 80? Grayson 87. Lee is able to get that and the fumble recovery for the touchdown, but either way, Don, you're right. I mean, it was almost like he had a little Steph Curry in him and just trying to keep the dribble alive. Got his hand in there, was able to, you know, that's tough, man. Footballs aren't round, as everybody knows. Is able to find the ears, scoop it up and go. Yeah, he sure did. He, he dropped did the ball on the one. He did not get credit for that touchdown. That's right, it's gonna be Grayson Lee. Malik Fletcher's got it here. We'll get another look at that from another angle, but he sure enough reached back and dropped it on the one yard line and Lee was there to scoop it up. Yeah, got some early fireworks here on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. That reminds me of an old Jerry Comalander saying, get your name in the paper. <laughs> Bradford's name's not gonna show up under that score. <laughs> Instead, it's gonna be a Grayson yeah, Lee. It's gonna be a really nice assist. And not only that, as we said, Marcus Guetta, you know, when you're a defensive lineman, you get that big a push on a field goal and you can bust through like that and get one of those big old mitts up there and bust that thing up right there at the point. Pretty nice, impressive play there by 77. All right, so Churchill down 10-0, trying to get something going. Perez is going to run. Now he's going to throw. He's got Fletcher. Oh, what a pass. Fletcher caught it. He sure Boy, did, but that my goodness. goodness. Yeah. Here's our America's Diamond smile cam as the flag is down. America's Diamond, we thank them for their sponsorship of smile cam. Churchill had something to smile about there for only a second, but it looks like a flag's gonna bring it back. Wow, in traffic, there were defenders all around the receiver. And Derek Perez just dropping a dime down there on the run. Man, we're seeing some athleticism here tonight. <laughs> you make a strong case this this kid could be 19 Illegal for forward pass on the offense. Quarterback was beyond the line when he threw the ball. Five yards from the spot of the foul includes loss of down. Second down. Got the full explanation there from yeah, Brock I Pittman. I didn't see that. So guys on the field, obviously better peepers than right over here in the booth. Still a heck of a throw. Not taking that one back. Obviously, the loss of down really hurts. And you know, this, this is a big job for Churchill because, as we know, the O'Connor defense was on the field for that entire last drive. So you get a special teams touchdown going the other way. The defense has got to go back on the field. So this is a really good opportunity here for this O'Connor defense. If it can get off the field, to basically stone Churchill on two straight drives. And that's not easy to do when you essentially have been on the field the entire quarter. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter with O'Connor leading Churchill 10-0. When we come back, the Chargers will have third and about 14 and a lot of work to do to catch up to a very good O'Connor team. We're headed to the second. The Panthers lead it 10-0. Welcome back. Time for our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics. First quarter highlights. Big Marcus Guerra with the block. 
Miller Bradford was going to score, but he drops the ball on the one-yard line, so his teammate <laughs> Grayson Lee gets credit for the score. Nevertheless, it's 10-0 O'Connor. The old Deshaun Jackson play, remember that? Yeah. U.S. Army All-American ball about 100 years ago. <laughs> Uh, he dove from like the yeah. he dove from like the ten and ended up on the one. I believe it was in the pros where he dropped it behind him too. It's like Jackson was always doing that kind of stuff. O'Connor showing blitz, flag flies as Perez fires. It's caught, but he was out of bounds. Was the intended receiver, but it's coming back anyway because of a a flag. Chuck, you made a good point about Perez. Hold on, offsides. On the defense, number nine, five-yard penalty, still third down. But I mean, I mean, look, I mean, he hasn't missed yet. I mean, it was a drop ball from him being what, 20 for 20 or something? Yeah, and that was a pinpoint throw as well. I thought that was a complete. And the one where he crossed the line of scrimmage, but everything that he throws is right on the money. Well, they get the gift from O'Connor being offsides. And we'll see if they can make that stick. Again, the O'Connor defense has been essentially on the field for two straight drives now. So Churchill really needs to take advantage. And this is not an easy down to do it on when you're this far from the stick. 13. Bell is the lead blocker for Perez who rolls to his right and he gets drilled by Miller Bradford. Oh my goodness. Don, it's absolutely astounding how quickly Millard Bradford closes ground here. Perez thinks he's got time, and he does. If seven's not on the field, but look at that. I mean, he just put it into some kind of other gear, 10th gear. Look at the functional speed and able to close the gap like that, turn that into a loss and a punting situation. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Jalen Hughes back to return, but Millard Bradford earlier, I thought had, had the collision of the game when he made that tackle on the first series, and that one beats that. He's got both of our nominees so far for the collision of the game. Hughes muffs it, picks it back up, and is tackled right at about the 36-yard line as we head down to the sidelines and Mike Hernandez. Mike? Yes. Joined by an old friend here, Riley Walker from San Antonio Sports. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. Great game, isn't it? Oh, so far. I'm excited. We've got to see a couple of the collisions close up and personal right here. Tell us a little bit about something you have going again this year. It's really exciting, the All-Star Cheer Challenge. Absolutely. So four local cheer teams will have the chance to cheer at one of the highest, you know, high uh, All-Star. It's going to be crazy. I mean, big All-Star game. Right? The, the, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl yeah. and then, of course, the San Antonio Sports All-Star game. Both games will be televised. Couldn't be more excited. Yeah. Now, how do people uh, it, it get involved, and how do the teams actually, how does that work? Uh, so you can visit sanantoniosports.org slash cheer to sign up and learn more about the campaign. Um, all four teams will get, the top four finalists will get a chance to cheer at either game, and the top two finalists will win a $1,000 or $500 grant for their program. And then they get to cheer in that big game, and that's a big game. It's televised nationally. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and thank you, San Antonio Sports. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Mike. You know, the best part about going down to Mike in that sideline interview there? Yeah. It's the fact that our good friend Lon Oakley, who runs the press box up here at NEISD, and he made us some cookies and brownies. We were able to douse a couple of those bad boys while <laughs> Mike was doing his thing. So thanks, Lon. As always, the hospitality here in Northeast, second to none. There not many better than Lon Oakley. Nope. Amen. Longtime veteran. And I'm just curious if Lon baked those himself. Or I think that's, Mrs. Lon that's, made that's that. That's Mrs. Oakley. I think so, too. Yes, sir. We've already seen what Miller Bradford can do on the defensive side, on the special team side. Now he's lined up at running back. Not familiar for him, but he's back there blocking for Sanchez, who takes a straight drop and is going to be dropped himself right at about the 26. Really good push by the entire defensive line of the Churchill Chargers. And Theron Hayes. Yeah, that was a quick three and out, wasn't it? One of the guys back there first. Yeah. Nice play for the Churchill defense, so they'll get the ball back. Luke Rosas stands at his 40. Sanchez, the quarterback, will punt it away. Low kick. Rosas 
calls for the fair catch and makes it right at the 40. And that's where Churchill will have it. Down to nothing when we come back. You're watching a good one. Hallmark University, Thursday night lights. The Chargers will try to get on the board. All right, welcome back. Uh, again, a uh, face that you remember from last week. This is Tina Schubert, this regional trainer for Jack in the Box. How you doing? Good. Hi. How's everybody? And you brought a friend. This is a district manager, District 14, David Zuniga. How are you, sir? Good, sir. And you? I'm doing great. I'm great. So, how you been? Jack in the Box, still, oh, still smoking? Oh, smoking. We're doing great. Glad to be out here. The weather's awesome. It's awesome. Again, why do you guys get involved in this? This is, this is special. Uh, we just want to be part of the community and come out and help and, and just enjoy all this. This is awesome. So being part of the team. Okay. So I had a little fun with you last week. We were talking about the, you had the, not, not just the big chicken. We had the really big chicken special. Really big. Yes. Really big. Now we have something else. Oh, we have the three for three. So everybody's got to come out and try our three for three. So we have a selection of uh, items, and you can pick any three of them for three dollars, including the really big chicken. No, no that's I'm kidding. Own special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tina, David, thank you so much. Thank Back to you. you guys. That sounds pretty good. Three for three bucks. Not only that, I mean, if you, the egg rolls are out of this world there. That's three. when I go to Jack in the Box, I get me the egg rolls. Three of anything for three bucks is good. Most places are. Drink is three bucks. Look, I'm going to tell you one more time about the egg rolls, and then I'm going to stop. <laughs> They're sneaky, man. Second down and three. For Perez, who looks to his right, fires that slant again. This time it's tipped, and it was almost intercepted. Trying to make a one-handed pick was Zaire. Zaire Taylor, the commit to the University of Houston. You see the bunch of different looks that O'Connor has given them on defense. They go man and look how stout they were playing zone right there. Got a hand on the ball and very nearly created another turnover. Lots of active defenders on the O'Connor side and obviously lots of athletes. So that sets up third down, but there you see Zaire Taylor committed to the University of Houston, a three-year starter there at O'Connor, part of our Texas silk screen and embroidery player profile as Perez runs for his life. And again, it's Miller Bradford in there really quickly to make the tackle. Yeah, and that's one of those plays you almost have to check out of. I mean, the entire O'Connor defense was in the box right there, trying to snuff out the run, and that's exactly what they were able to do. Good call. We've been around high school football a long time. And we've seen dominant performances by many, many good players. But I'm telling you right now, the speed and the power of number seven in white tonight is as good as I've seen in many, many years. Yeah, I mean, that last play where he was able to get the sack, I mean, it's unbelievable he could leave his receiver that quickly and then go make a play in the backfield. A good hop for the Chargers. Will it get out of bounds? No, it gets into the end zone for a touchback. And when you talk about Bradford, you're talking about a kid who may have already given TCU a verbal. Those are his offers. Uh, third place in the 100 meters, so you know he's got the speed. His coaches were telling us pregame, eh, 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, somewhere in there. Another three-year starter. And Chuck, I believe he's got some basketball skills, the way he kept that Allen Iverson dribble alive on that well, uh, I mean, it, punt it's, return. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to coach football IQ. I mean, but he saw that play as it was going. And, I mean, to be able to be, slow it down in your brain like that, you see Roel Sanchez take out. But to make a play like that, to see it all develop slowly and then to get a hand and then at full speed be able to find the ears grab it and then take off i mean he did everything but score <laughs> and remember made a couple of picks last year on tnl so it's not like he's surprising any of us tonight that's for sure if you're getting a chance to watch this young man play football for the first time second down and one for sanchez and the o'connor panthers already up 10 nothing here a little zone read and he hands it and that's going to be a kielbasa first down as Jager Collins gets the first down and the call for the first time tonight. That's what O'Connor really likes to do. I mean, ground and pound, you use those big guys up front. We talked about how strong they are on the edges, but those three guys in the middle also do a fantastic job, and you saw that right there on just a simple dive play. Isaac Dennis on the carries. 
the hand of Brandon Garza. He gets about one. Good job by the interior defensive line of Churchill. Matt Elizondo in there as well. Yeah, Jake Wiss, Jet Collins, Seth Ruiz. Those guys aren't going to give anything away either on that other side. That's what's so intriguing about this matchup. I mean, you got skilled guys on both teams. You got big guys that can move on both teams. And this has been, you know, save for the special teams touchdown, man. It's about what we expected, a heavyweight fight. Second and nine now for the Panthers after no gain there. A little jet sweep coming this way to Jalen Hughes. He's being pursued, and Churchill doing a good job to trip him up. He dives forward for a nice gain, but Luke Rosas was there to really push him out of bounds more than anything else. Good pursuit by a couple of Chargers. Yeah, and everybody kind of forgets, I know me included, that Jalen Hughes was their leading receiver a year ago. And that's saying something, because we all remember what kind of player Jonathan Tapia was. But this kid, this is one of those guys that Coach Molesky says, I just don't get it. I mean, he is being under-recruited as far as he he is concerned. I mean, he just says, everybody says he's a step too slow. He's a small, you know, an inch too short. But he'll just continue to beat your brains out. And whoever decides they're going to take a chance on that young man, they're going to get a special player at the next level. Grayson Lee had no shot at that slant as it was overthrown by Sanchez. So Sanchez will have to punt it away on fourth down. And Rosas who forced that play out of bounds on third down, will be back to receive this punt. Nice kick that's gonna be fielded right at about the 27. No fair catch, and Rosas pays for it. Churchill will take over at about the 26 when we come back. It's been all O'Connor so far, but the Chargers have shown some signs of life. Can Derek Perez move him down the field? We're coming back. 6.14 left in the second quarter here on the CW35. All right, and welcome back. You know, halftime is, is the time when the players go and kind of regroup, but it's when you guys perform. This is Tony Ruiz, and he's the band director for the Churchill Chargers. How are you doing? Doing well, how are you? I'm good, so 10th year doing this? 10th year, yes. All right. And you know, I know you guys work very, very hard. Several hundred band members, right? Yeah, about 220 this year. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a large group and we do a lot of hours. Junior, seniors, freshmen, how's, what's the mix? Uh, we have an older group this year. Um, we have a lot of returning members. Uh, that's probably uh, 30, 40% uh, freshmen and the awesome. rest returning. So you got, you have some, you have some oh, seasons. Yeah, okay, yeah. so uh, halftime, what are we gonna see? Uh, we're gonna see a presentation of our uh, marching band show this year, it's called Lost, but it's spelled differently, it's L-O-Z-T, and it's kind of a twist on the Wizard of Oz, but the story of the wizard and not Dorothy's story. So um, you're gonna hear some Somewhere Over the Rainbow kind of mixed in throughout. Um, so it's a, a twist on the Wizard of Oz. All right, well, I'm looking forward to hearing that, and you have another good year. Okay? All right, thank you very much. All right, back to you. All right, thanks, Mike. In completion for Derek Perez will set up second down and 10 here at Jerry Comalander Stadium. Great night for football, great facility here, and two of the best teams in all of San Antonio, and we're seeing why the O'Connor Panthers are so highly rated up there with Judson and Steele in the top three. They look every bit the part tonight as Diego Vela takes the handoff and Sweeps to his left, no gain on the play. Those big guys for O'Connor making tackles again. Big Marcus Guerra who blocked that field goal attempt in on the tackle, as was Millard Bradford. Yeah, I mean, and really not giving an inch on that. Just kind of slid down the line there, waited for some help to come, held their own. Stopped it for a minimal gain, if any. will set up third down and nine for the Chargers. They've been able to move the football when they complete the pass. Haven't been able to run it much. There's a little dump pass that no ruling yet from the official. I believe it was caught. They're going to say incomplete and bring it back. It'll be fourth down and Churchill will have to punt it away. Boy, O'Connor's defense really doing a nice job mixing up the looks. Again, lots of guys in the box, putting a lot of pressure and a lot of heat in that backfield, and great call down on the field by the officials. It was indeed an incomplete pass. 
All right, so Churchill will punt it away. Nick Falzone will kick it to Jalen Hughes, who stands on his own 30-yard line. He gets it away clean. Hughes is going to let it bounce, and he's going to field it right there at the 30. He's got some room at the sideline. Spins back inside to the 45, and that's where he'll be brought down. And time for us to tell you about our Sprouts Farmer's Market $5,000 band grant. You're going to see a couple of great bands here tonight. If you like the O'Connor band, text band 3 to 44332. If you like the Churchill band, it's band 4 to 44332. And one of the teams from the entire season is going to get our $5,000 band grant made possible by Sprouts Farmers Market. All right, first down and 10 for Oel Sanchez. Good field position for the Panthers. As they hand to Garza to the outside, and he picks up about five. A nice little play there. Didn't look like it was going to amount to much when it first got going, but Garza doing a really nice job kind of picking his way there. And heck, any time you can split the sticks there and make a path to ground on first down, sure makes your offensive coordinator happy. There you see big Brandon Brown as they complete it to Hughes. Hughes gets across the 45, down to about the 44-yard line. Brown is the third of the three Brown boys that are all big-time college football players. His older brother is an all-conference player at Texas Tech, and they say that the baby is the best of them all. He's 6'6", 295 pounds, and are you ready for it? He's a junior. He's got TCU, Texas Tech, Tulsa, and many others, and so if you see success on that left side, he's one of the reasons why is that Hughes brings it in across the 25, down to the 22-yard line. Great throw, huh, Chuck? Mercy, that was a missile. You know, we we're talking about Roel Sanchez during the break and, you know, not really in rhythm right now. Maybe that'll get him going. I mean, he stepped back there, took his three-step drop and fired an absolute missile on that one. And... Boy, nothing wrong with his arm strength. We talked about it last week. I mean, he had four, four touchdown passes a week ago. Garza right up the middle. Garza across the 15. Another Kielbasa smoke meets first down and inside our Miracle Mattress red zone. Yeah, this is one of those guys, as we said, he can beat you a lot of different ways. And Coach Molesky couldn't say enough things about this young man. He's getting some looks from the Naval Academy. Thinks he might be really good in their offense, and I, I got to agree with him. I mean, obviously, he's really good with his feet, but you've seen his arm strength. I mean, he does a lot of different things well. Another hand to Garza, and he's wrangled down right there. Churchill's defense really coming up big as Jeff Collins was there to make the stop. Boy, was he. Got a free shot and made the most of it. Let's kind of slide that coverage down there and a name like Jet Collins. Look at his helmet. Are we, <laughs> are we in week two? This kid looks like he's been through a few wars. That huh? looks like one of those uh, those helmets that's maybe been handed down for about six seasons. As Garza again Look out. is a fake and Sanchez keeps touchdown O'Connor. Fake me out for sure. Well, that looked like the parting of the Red Sea. You weren't the only one that got swindled on that one. Great, Mercy. Great play fake to Brandon Garza, and Sanchez kept it himself and clear sailing to the end zone. Yeah, he could beat you with his arm and beat you with his feet. And Look, he was thinking about going left side with that, but parting of the Red Sea, and I don't know if anybody even laid a finger on it. The snap is good. Flags fly as the kick sails through the uprights. They'll call it good if it's on Churchill. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and this kid sees things that a lot of other kids don't. You know, we talked about him being our scholar athlete coming up at halftime, but he's not only a scholar in the classroom, he's a real uh, student yard. of the game, Coach Molesky says. Two minutes and five. Here's Brock Pittman. Offsides on the defense. Feelings decline. Right for point. Good. All right, so it's 17 to nothing as we headed down to the sidelines of Mike Hernandez. Mike? 
All right, I'm joined by Shirley Smith, and she is the co-owner of, of course, Countywide Service. How you doing? Doing great. Good to <laughs> now, see you. Good to see you, too. Now, again, you all have been nice enough to, to become a part of the TNL family. Why'd you get involved? Our second year doing it. Last year was great. We love it. We love supporting the kids. And it's just fun. It's fun to be out here. You got a lot of you got a lot of members of your staff that you introduced us to one last week yes. that are that are also very involved in the community. Oh, absolutely, and and it's great for us. You know, we've got kids, got kids in band, got kids on the field. We've always have people that are you know watching, and you know we want them to know we support them. Hey, so you're uh, you're like me. You're one of the few people that's interested in the weather, but. I look at it as my yes. primary business. You look at it as because the weather changes. That affects your business big time, too. Oh, it does. And if they, if you guys have been putting anything off, right now is deal time. <laughs> In between seasons, if you're looking for duct work or equipment, you know, now is really a good time to do that because it gets busy again. It's going to get cold, believe it or not. Cold in South Texas. Oh, Thank will. you, Shirley. I know it does. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. All right. Thanks, Mike. It's been all O'Connor so far with 3.05 left here to play in the first half. With one of those little pooch kicks. Churchill will actually field right before it goes out of bounds. Austin Castilleja will bring it in. And Derek Perez will have maybe just one more opportunity here in the first half to put points on the board for the Chargers. Yeah, and really an evenly matched game as we thought it would be. You know, Sands for the Big play on the blocked field goal that resulted in seven points for O'Connor, but a really outstanding drive for the Panthers right there. Capped off by Roel Sanchez, and this is a chance to talk about what kind of kid we're, we're really all proud of here in San Antonio. I mean, the kind of kid that you want leading your football team, and Coach Molesky, it's really his, his guy on the field and doing a nice job on that drive and finishing off with a touchdown. All right, so here's the Chargers on first and 10. The slant wide open is Malik Fletcher. Across the 40, Fletcher showing some speed. See Fletcher ya. may go. Malik Fletcher, touchdown, Churchill. Just like that, the Chargers strike and make it a football game. Yeah, don't go to sleep on Malik Fletcher. This is one of those guys we were talking to Coach Harris about this week. Catches the ball in space, can beat you over the top, and they just gave him a free run. Nobody near him, and a guy with this much speed and this much playmaking ability, one little juke step there, but again, goes in untouched. And we talked about the big play capabilities of the O'Connor Panthers. Just like that, Winston Churchill getting on the board and making this a ball game again. Nick Valzone's extra point is up and good. It's 17 to seven. And you know, Perez has hit Fletcher on that slant three or four times tonight. This time, there was nobody in the middle of the field. Well, this is a young man. They want to get the ball into his hands as much as possible. And you can see why. I mean, he makes a lot of things happen. But boy, that's one of those plays that O'Connor's going to look at the tape and go, what the heck were we doing right there? As we told you, what a matchup tonight. Both teams in our TNL top 10. That caps that 74-yard touchdown drive of one play, and it only took 13 seconds. Here's a look at the uh, Hallmark University TNL Top 10. Judson and Steele, 1-2. O'Connor's number three. Smithson Valley's fourth. Then you got Johnson, Churchill, Reagan, Clemens, Warren, and Highlands, and we're happy to say we've got a number of those teams on that board right there on the schedule this year right here on TNL. Yeah, how about the Highlands Owls? You know, I mean, boy, what, what, three, four years ago, we're talking about a team that had a hard time winning a football game, much less being a team that'd be ranked in the city. And they got a new coach out there this year, a perennial playoff team, last couple. They got a big game this week with Holmes, I believe, right? Yep, and it, it, tonight, actually, they're trailing. Is it? All right. They're trailing the... Uh, Huskies 14-7 right now in the first quarter in the Juan Morales Bowl. Of course, Morales was the coach at Highlands last year, the coach at Holmes this year. And so that game going on across town. Blanco down to Holy Cross 14-0, we're told, as well. Lots of games going on in the area. Kind of like it, the fact that they spread out the schedule and make Thursday night just as good as Friday night. 
getting the word from the officiating crew if we'll have to tee this one up and kick it over. And it looks like we will. Here's Brock. Offside. The kicking team. Five yard penalty. Free kick. Now that is a spring football mistake. You just, it's rule number one of football, and that is you don't cross the 40 until the guy kicks the ball. <laughs> Coaches will have a good time with this one on film. That's like a wide receiver being out, uh, jumping. Yeah, it happens. It happens, especially early in the year. Oh, yeah, and these guys are learning the game and Honestly, Don, I mean, these coaches in the area do such a great job. I mean, I'm surprised the continuity that we see week in and week out when you're talking about this many moving parts. Kick is one of those pooch kicks that go out of bounds right there. Of course, the flag flies, but O'Connor will have the ball and 252 trying to move it. Look at our America's Diamond smile cam. Churchill cheerleaders still with a lot to smile about because their team's back in it. Only a 10-point game here. On a kicking team, five-yard penalty, free kick. And Churchill did it again. So <laughs> special teams film room is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, either that or Coach Harris is going to make him run gassers at halftime. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right, but here's the serious part about it is now if you, you gamble with that pooch, you're giving them, you know, the 40. Yeah. So, and if you kick it away, you're kicking it to two electric athletes. So, you know, you can joke about these little mistakes, but at some point they're going to cost you. Most of these teams will do the pooch because, hey, okay, I will, we'll live with the 30. But the 40 is a different story. So he'll kick it away. And now Jalen Hughes is going to have the chance to make you really pay for it. <laughs> Good defense by Churchill on the special team stop, but two flags fly as Luke Rosas was there to make the tackle. And Brock sorts it all out. How many flags can you have on special teams, right? Fourth. This is the fourth. During return, holding. On return team number eight. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Well, look on the bright side, Chuck. We're not re-kicking it. But Churchill's going to come out okay with this yep. because of another penalty on O'Connor. Yeah, and we'll see how... Coach Molesky chooses to roll with this. It's one of those things, you know, maybe you run a couple of run plays and see what happens, but you know, the last thing you want to do is give Churchill another crack at this. You've had a pretty clean first half. You're up 10 against a really good opponent. Let's see where, how Molesky rolls with this. To keep her for Sanchez, he's knocked down. Maybe a loss on the play. Somebody lost their hat. Anthony Estrada and Seth Jake was there to make the tackle. And he's got to come out of the game for at least one play, so they got to switch that up. It's a big kid. Second down and 10. There's a lot of big boys on the field tonight. Sanchez looking to throw it, rolling. Going to finally throw it. It's good for a first down, and there's a collision nominee. Big time tackle from the Chargers. As Chris Roper was there to drill him after the catch. Well, we're seeing what Coach Molesky wants to do. He's not going quietly into that good night. He's going to put the ball in the air and see if he can't get another score here. Sanchez doing a really nice job rolling away from the pressure, finding an open man and moving the chains. It's Parker Robertson with the catch. Garza carries for about three. Stick around for our halftime show. Coming up, it's the countywide service halftime show. 
You're going to see the O'Connor Band, the Churchill Band, and our Vulcan Materials Company Scholar Athletes. That's all coming up at halftime. Sanchez, straight drop, going deep. Has a man coming back for it, but incomplete. Grayson Lee was there, but was a little bit underthrown, and that's what happens when you try to throw it 70. Boy, Grayson Lee, what an interesting story this young man is. Came to O'Connor as a junior, and he was homeschooled, but he was playing football at Feast. Now, I know our kids went to private school, played the Feast schools. They're always really good, but goes into the coach's office and says, yeah, I can play a little football, and by the way, I run track too. <laughs> triple jumper. <laughs> goes to the state meet and triple jump. I mean, what an athlete this kid is. Third down and eight, slant route oh. caught. And it's Hughes across the 45. Tick tock, a minute 30 left. The Panthers on the drive. Nico Espinoza with the tackle. Nothing wrong with that throw. Sanchez rolling to his right, keeps. A lot of contact, but he picks up a couple. He was able to fall forward there. That was an impressive run. Finish that one off like a running back. They tick inside of a minute. You can see why Navy's looking at this guy as a spread option quarterback. I mean, he just does a really nice job of finishing runs as if he was a fullback. He's got three receivers to his left here. He's looking that way. Now he looks back to his right one-on-one -on -one for Hughes, and it's knocked away. I think it was Bradford, the intended receiver. Good defense there by the Chargers. Take a look and see who was there to knock it down. That was a Guillermo Rodriguez. I think it was. Face guarding there, but good play nonetheless. Didn't make any contact. Is that Quayle? Third down and two with 45 seconds to go. O'Connor trying to keep the drive alive. Sanchez picks up the first down. And they call a timeout with 40 seconds. And that gives you, us time to talk about our Beyond the Game initiative that we've been talking about all year. Actually, no timeout. We'll mention the Beyond the Game here in a second. But O'Connor hurries up. They stop the clock to move the chains. But they started it back. And now we're under 30 seconds. As Sanchez rolls right. Throws right, throws it out of bounds. And that'll stop it with 20 left. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army are recognizing teams that have exhibited key values throughout their actions. To learn how parents, teachers, coaches can nominate teams that go beyond the game, just go to sanantoniosports.org and watch tonight's halftime show for this week's teams that are going beyond the game. All right, 20 seconds left. Second and five, Roel Sanchez snaps on the ground, going deep across the middle. He's got Hughes down there, jump ball, and it's knocked away. Good coverage by the Chargers. Luke Rosas, I've called his name a hundred times tonight, there on the great defensive coverage. I really like the aggressive mentality of this O'Connor offense and Coach Molesky. I mean, I mean, they're going for the jugular. I mean, they're not taking for granted any possessions in this very close football game. And here they are, third down, 13 seconds left to go, they're taking shots at the end zone, and I like it. Third and four. Lissy's a good kicker. I don't know if he's got 50 in him, though. Going deep again. Same route down the sideline. Caught. Touchdown. Millard Bradford. <laughs> Dime. Hello. How about that? Just a streak. Speed down the field and Roel Sanchez putting it right on the button. Nothing fancy about this. They had it earlier One, about three plays ago. Two, three, lets it fly. Oh, you couldn't throw it any better. Look at that. Bradford just, again, you talk about guys and their football IQ. Gets a little left hand there, just gets a little bit of push and a little bit of separation from the defender, creating some space for himself. And wow, we've got two huge plays here to end the first half. 
Yeah, and with only six seconds to go, they make it 24 to seven. As you look at O'Connor's schedule, they got Churchill, and then next week, boy, that's going to be a good one. At Steel, that'll be number two against number three going into it. Then you got Johnson, and then they start their district schedule with Taft, Warren, Stevens, Jay, Clark, and et cetera there in their great district play. But Chuck, as you know, the great Jerry Comlander used to say as well, sometimes it's not about the X's and the O's, it's about the Willies and the Joes. <laughs> and when you have a guy that wears number seven and you play and he's a defensive back and he's a defensive back recruit but if he's the best athlete on the field you line him up you run him down the sideline and you throw him the football it's that and then again i like just the whole mentality of the program it's like look at that's a murderer's row going into zone play they're doing everything they can as a program to get them ready when playoff time comes along and I mean, you couldn't schedule three tougher guys to start the season with Mac Churchill and then Steele next week. So, yeah, I, I would, again, I, I just like the mentality of Coach Molesky and, you know, and what he's all about and what he's trying to do here. I mean, it's, you know, there are a lot of guys that would, you know, you'd be really happy that you're up 10 with the ball way back on your side of the field. You got to go 80 yards for a score and a smidge over two minutes left to go. And, man, he's going for the throat. Yep, a lot of things that you do in week two carry over to week eight or week nine when you're in the heart of that district schedule as we show you what's coming up tonight after Hallmark University's Thursday Night Lights. It's Penn and Teller Fool Us. And then whose line is it anyway? It's all coming up on the CW35. This will be the last play of the game. First down for Churchill, six seconds to go. Chargers got some of that momentum back on the Malik Fletcher touchdown, but uh, O'Connor answers here. And Churchill will have their hands full here in the second half. Fletcher's gonna go back to play safety. They'll just take a knee here and that'll take us to the half. We want you to stick around for our countywide halftime show. I was told before the game that the O'Connor band is second in the state only to Texas Tech in the size of their band. Really? A 400 piece marching band. Don't know if they're all gonna be here tonight. But a very impressive O'Connor band and the Churchill Charger band, always great as well. So we will have that coming up. In the meantime, Mike Hernandez is down on the sidelines trying to round up Coach Molesky. It's Coach Harris of Churchill here on the near side. Mike? Okay, guys, uh, just a uh, quick Quick thoughts on the first half. It's, it seemed like you guys played a solid game, but yet the score, it's, it's a tough one. Well, it's like I said before the game, we can't do things to shoot ourselves in the foot and create mistakes. You know, giving up the block field goal for a touchdown, you know, that's a 10 point swing right there. You can say coulda, woulda, shoulda, but it, it could easily be a 17 10 game, even with giving up that Hail Mary with six seconds left. We're better than what we showed in the first half. They're a good football team, but we're better than what we showed. All right, coach, thank you very much. Good luck in the second half. All right, Ron Harris, all business. Maybe we'll see that better team here in the second half. We're excited about the halftime show. Stick around. It's O'Connor 24-7 on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Welcome to the Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. And welcome back to our Thursday Night Lights game. Uh, currently, the score at halftime is O'Connor 24 and Churchill 7. Been a really, really good game so far. We'll see what the second half holds. I'm joined by the one and only Caitlin Munoz of CW Insider. How you doing? I'm great. Feeling good. Good game. Great game, huh? Yeah, I know. A lot of big plays. I know. I'm excited. I don't want to leave yet. <laughs> don't leave. I won't leave. I'll stay. I'll stay a little bit longer. All right. Tell us about... Tell us about what you're doing and, and, and some tickets that you guys are giving away too. Okay, yeah, CW Crew, if you want to join, just text CW Crew to the number, which is 44332, very easy to remember. And yeah, we're gonna give away some NFL tickets soon. So if you are an NFL fan, even if you're not, that's really cool to go yeah. to an NFL game. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so they can do that too, and that's at that same 
how do you? Join the crew. Yeah, just join the crew and we'll alert you when we're doing all that fun okay, stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. You need to stay for the rest of the game. I got the feeling it's going to get a lot closer. It's going to be a lot more exciting. All right. Speaking of exciting, it's time for our halftime show, and we're starting with the O'Connor Band. Take a listen. Wow, how good and how big is that O'Connor Panther Band? If you want them to be the winner of our $5,000 Sprouts Farmer's Market Band Grant, just text BAND3 to 44332. That's BAND3 to 44332. Again, the $5,000 Band Grant made possible by Sprouts Farmer's Market. Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. It's time to recognize tonight's Scholar Athletes of the Week. You know, each week we're going to highlight one student from each school playing on TNL. At the end of the season, one featured student will be awarded a $10,000 scholarship presented by Vulcan Materials Company. Let's meet this week's winners. Meet Ryan Booth. He's a senior at Churchill High School, and he's a three-year letterman on the track and football team. 
Now, he's an offensive lineman on the football team, and he has a GPA of 104. Wow. And he's worked hard for this, and he says there's a whole lot of people to share his success with. Um, definitely, first of all, my parents, you know, um, they always push me from a real young age, you know, uh, do the best I can in my grades. And then, um, you know, my teachers at Churchill, you know, uh, every teacher I've had has been fantastic. They've prepared me um, exceptionally well for every test that I've taken and every you know, homework assignment that I've had. So definitely my, my parents and teachers and coaches, too, of course. Now he's involved in numerous community activities like Habitat for Humanity, Relay for Life, and peer monitoring through PALS. Now, he's also very involved in his church, and he has some advice to those that might follow him at Churchill. Definitely just, you know, put it all out there. You know, whatever you do, you know, go all, go all out 100% at it. Um, you know, and then also, you know, be as involved as possible so then, you know, you can, you know, you can have many different groups of friends and, you know, ways to give back. And this is senior Roel Sanchez. Now, Roel is a quarterback for O'Connor High School. He also plays basketball and track, and he's an officer of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And believe it or not, he already knows what he wants to become. It's one thing that I want to do is be a coach, and in order to do that, I also need to go into education, become a teacher. And he says he's already trying to learn about coaching from his coaches. I would describe myself as very understanding, uh, especially right now at my age, and just knowing how, you know, or what goes through my head and what goes on, you know, as a player. Um, and just also just being able to help out um, the likes and dislikes of, or I guess the way I think of things. Um, just being able to relate to a player is, is the main thing of, I feel, that being a good coach. And as far as his inspirations? Um, definitely Coach Molesky. Um, like I said before, you know, he really teaches us to be, you know, not the best football player we can be, but the best person. And he's really helped me out with that. Congratulations to Royal Sanchez and Ryan Booth, your Vulcan Materials Company Scholar Athletes of the Week. All right, some great, great, some great, great kids for sure. And again, uh, I'm joined by Valerie Garcia from Vulcan Materials Company. How are you doing again? And also from Soldier's Angel, this is Jennifer Shernock. Now, Jennifer, I've done some several stories, so I saw her face, and I was like, I, I know this lady. <laughs> Soldiers Angels is a wonderful organization, uh, and we're going to talk about how you guys tie in in just a second. Again, though, you, you know, listen to those, those those stories of those kids and and, and how motivated, how outstanding you are. I mean, it's they are. It's 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 fun to see those kinds of kids. You no, know, we're we're so excited to be stewards in the communities that we serve. You know, and I think that we definitely want to help help them get to where they're going. It really means a lot to us to be that stepping stone for them. And one of the other things that you do, you guys get involved in, in another community events, and you have this yes. Corey Crusher. Crusher, run. Crusher yeah, this weekend. And that's where Soldiers Angels yes. come. Tell us about that. It's a 5K, 10K run. Uh, the beneficiary is Soldiers Angels. We know it's going to a great cause. So we want as many people to come out and support it as you possibly can. All right, so Jennifer, tell us a little bit about Soldiers Angels. Okay, Soldiers Angels, we're a national nonprofit based here in San Antonio, and we support our deployed service members, our wounded heroes, our veterans, and their families. So we are excited to be part of the Rock the Quarry this weekend so that we can continue our mission and, and help them in their time of need. And I can tell them firsthand, folks, I can tell you that they do wonderful, wonderful work. I said I've done several stories with Soldiers Angels. Okay, people want to still get involved. What do they need to do? Um, just check out QuarryCrusherRun.com. Click on San Antonio, and all the event information is there. All right. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Vulcan Materials, for what you do. All right, let's, uh, let's take a listen now to the Churchill Band.
about them Chargers? If you want to vote for Churchill for our Sprouts Farmer's Market $5,000 band grant, just text band 4 to 44332. That's band 4 to 44332. Again, the band grant made possible by Sprouts Farmer's Market. Celebrate Midland High School teams that go beyond the game. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army are recognizing teams that have exhibited key values through their actions. This week, we recognize the Alamo Heights football program. On August 11th of this year, the 9th through 12th grade mules and their coaches spent half a day at the San Antonio Food Bank helping with a variety of projects for this nonprofit that fights hunger and feeds hope in 16 area counties. It was a great team building opportunity that demonstrated the beyond the game values of selfless service, caring, and respect. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army appreciate high school and middle school coaches who inspire their teams to serve others. To learn how parents, teachers, and coaches can nominate teams that go beyond the game, visit sanantoniosports.org. Thank you for watching the Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. Stay tuned for the second half of tonight's game. We're back, time for our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics halftime highlights. Of course, it all got started with Marcus Guerra's blocked field goal attempt. Milford Bradford scooped it up and looked like he scored, but actually Grayson Lee gets credit for it because he left it on the one yard line. Roel Sanchez went 16 yards here in the second quarter to make it 17-0 Panthers. Churchill got some momentum back. Malik Fletcher on the receiving end of the 74-yard touchdown. Churchill had cut the lead to 17-7 to at that point. But then with just six ticks left on the clock in the half, Millard Bradford, who's been all over the field tonight, scores on the 34-yard reception. And there you go, O'Connor in control, 24-7. to All right, it's time for our Ernest Roofing second half kickoff. Second half sponsored by Ernest Roofing. They have you covered. Don, if you're gonna have some touchdowns in a football game, they may as well be explosive plays. We've got three of them so far tonight. And really this is a chance for O'Connor to really make that last drive stick because you know we talk about managing football games. They were able to take that last two minutes and change to end the first half. Go get a touchdown, and of course, they get the ball first here in the second half. So they were able to get that one extra possession. And, you know, in a game like this, every possession counts. So really an unbelievable job by O'Connor finishing up that first half. Nick Valzone's kick is taken by the up man and going across the 35 to about the 38-yard line is Parker Robertson. And it's time for our first half stats, courtesy of our Great statistician, our statistician extraordinaire, Mark Kusenberger. Yeah, he's got a kid in the Churchill band. Proud Papa tonight. Amen. Well, Don, as we look at the stats, actually they're all pretty much even, but you know, the biggest thing right now for Churchill is they've got to try to get something going on the ground. And if they can't, they got to get some more yards passing because O'Connor's doing a really nice job stacking the box right now and daring them to throw. There's stuff in the run, obviously, with only three yards rushing for the Chargers. Sanchez hands off to Garza, who picks up a first down, gain of about 11 on the first play. Let's head down to the sidelines. Mike Hernandez talked with David Molesky. Uh, Mikey, they struck at the end of the half to make it a little more comfortable. Is he comfortable with his lead? No, no, he's not. He actually referred to the game so far on their side as uh, the Clint Eastwood movie, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> he said, we did some good stuff. Some of the other stuff, it just wasn't good. He said he really hated giving up those seven points uh, to Churchill. He said it gave them life. 
He says he's really probably not going to be happy with the team till sometime in December, and probably late December, he says, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, they're, they're, they got a long way to go in his mind, but uh, we'll see what they can do the second half. Very confident that they will still be playing at that time of the year, and after seeing what we've seen tonight, no doubt, there's no reason to doubt the fact that they will probably be doing that. Well, you know, it's one of those things, you know, sometimes it's the luck of the draw. I mean, you start the playoffs last year, and you get Judson in round one. I mean, you know, somebody really good's going to go home. A handoff coming to the right side is Bradford, his first carry on the night, lining up there at running back in place of Trey Patterson, who was their leading rusher, ran for over 100 yards, did Patterson in week one, but we have not seen him yet tonight. Doesn't look like he's going to play, and... Bradford's done it all now. He's scooped up a special teams play, made two crushing hits from his safety position, caught a touchdown as a wide receiver, and now carrying the football as a running back. Yeah, the biggest thing is, as you know, and the coaches will tell you too, they're looking out for kids' safety, and Patterson's a little nicked, and obviously zone play still awaits the O'Connor Panthers. Sanchez fires a little too high for Lee. So Connor will have to punt it away on their first possession of the second half right at midfield. Rosas back to receive the punt, standing at about his 15. And Churchill now chomping at the bit to try to cut this back to a manageable deficit. Yeah, and I mean, that's a really good job by the Churchill defense because O'Connor gets the ball first in the second half. They get really good field position after the, the kickoff and then are able to force the punt. Or is it? It's a fake punt. Sanchez keeping, trying to get to the sticks, is not going to get there. The Churchill defense special teams holds, and the Chargers will have good field position. That I think, was fake. I think, the, I think the look says it all. Yeah, that was a fake all the way. I'm not sure if Sanchez had the option to try to punt it away if it wasn't there, but it never looked like he intended to kick that football. A yeah, player trying to make a play. I think what they're discussing right now is, you know, maybe he's got the option to do that if he sees something. But I think really the last thing you want to do is give Churchill life here to start the second half. All right, so the Chargers with a spark. Ball in their own 45. Derek Perez, a quarterback. Running for his life, and he's going to be slung down south of the 40. Connor Callahan with the tackle and good penetration from the O'Connor defense. Indeed, Gabe Diaz also back there, but this is one of those things where they were reading the quarterback all the way and two or three O'Connor Panthers there to snuff that one out. The second down and 15 for the Chargers. Both squads. Taking their time tonight, getting in those signals from the sidelines. Inside handoff to Diego Vela. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll set up third down and 10. Number 70 making a really nice play there for O'Connor. Grayson Greer. Big defensive fella. lineman, and yeah, look at that. Just a sophomore. So they got some players. <laughs> O'Connor. 70 don't they? and 71. And you know, Chuck, we said this a couple years ago when we saw those Judson kids as sophomores. And now, Jalon Williams and Sarah McCormick, Jay Miller, making plays all over the place. And bright future here at O'Connor. Perez fires. It's caught by Austin Castilleja right there at the 49-yard line, but it's going to be short of a first down. And Churchill at midfield will have to punt it away. Yeah, maybe thinking about possibly going for it, but yeah, that's one of those things where yeah, you could probably go either way. I mean, you've got some stuff going on here early on. We're in week two. It's not a district game. I guess if nothing else, you don't want to give somebody in, in the district some tape to look at here if you try to fake it on fourth down. Falzone's kick is a good one. Angled towards the sideline but he couldn't quite get it to the pylon and so it'll go in as a touchback and O'Connor will have it 
when we come back. They're up 24 to 7. Trying to extend that lead here on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Look at the hardware. These trophies will be awarded tonight to the winning team and the player of the game. Trophies custom designed by our friends at Monarch Trophy Studio. If you're looking for trophies, plaques, or custom engraving, call Monarch 210-344-3777. First down and 10 for Jalen Hughes on a jet sweep. Got the first down, got more. Hughes across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. A lot of guys throwing blocks on that one, starting with Evan Simonis up front, the center. And you get some of these electrifying athletes out in space. Look at everybody pulling. It's just a really nice job cutting the ball back up start upside the middle of the field. All right, that's Akil Basa smoke meets first down for Hughes and the Panthers. Sanchez keeps himself, runs to the left-hand side. Nice move to cut back inside. Still going out of bounds near the 30, but just a foot in the ground, shake and bake move there by the quarterback. Isn't it funny, you, know, you start first down, feel a little bit of a gadget play, something that the other team hasn't seen a whole lot, and then all of a sudden, some other things start to open up for you. And again, good blocking up front. You see the blocking downfield. Just a very nice play all the way around. The Panthers with a little more pep in their step here on the second possession of the second half. It's a first and 10, Churchill territory. Run the jet sweep this way again, this time to Hughes. Cuts it up inside, watch out. Jalen Hughes inside the 15, down to the 12. Matt Elizondo there to bring him down, but not before he gets into the Miracle Mattress red zone and another Kielbasa smoke meat first down. Oh, works so well to start the drive. Why not do this the other way? You can just see the speed, speed kills. Really nice drive here for O'Connor on their second possession of the second half. You think that they seem at this point to have the Churchill defense on their heels right here with 6.50 to play. There's a handoff to Bradford who breaks a tackle, still on his feet, using his strength all the way down to the five yard line. That doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> That's just I'm better than you kind of play. Uh, lost a shoe in the process, but it's still a win-win. He got it back. <laughs> Zach Cuellar on the tackle, but yeah, I mean, he's down for a loss right there, and then he's hit two or three times and ends up moving the pile three or four yards extra on the run. Second down and three can get a first down here. Don't have to get the touchdown. Keeping it and getting in for the touchdown is Roel Sanchez. And just like that, O'Connor goes down the field and scores again to make it 30 to 7. Just good old blood and guts. You know, last week they had a lot of yards rushing the ball and were able to throw the ball a little bit too. But again, as an offense, and what they really want to do is establish the run, and they've really done a nice job doing that, especially on this particular drive. You, know, you get a couple of things that bounce outside, and then you're able to get some gas yardage up the middle. Michael Lissy, the all-district kicker. His extra point is up and good. It's 31-7 O'Connor with six minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's all Panthers, number three in our TNL Top 10. Closed captioning for tonight's game is sponsored by DNA Reference Lab. Oh, what a night, huh? Full moon. Full moon and it's red, too. What does that mean? I don't know, but I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Just got an update from the Juan Morales Bowl and Highlands, the program that he built in front of Holmes, 36 to 21. Coach Hank coming back. Yeah. His first year running the program. There you see the scoring drive by O'Connor capped off by that six yard touchdown run by Sanchez. Only took a minute 45 as they went right down the field and Churchill's got to stop the bleeding now down 31 to seven. Rosas back to receive it has a little scene there in the middle of the field takes it 
Still on his feet, past the 35-yard line. Nice return by the Chargers. Lots to smile about after that play by our Churchill Chargers right there on the America's Diamond Smile Cam. Down 31 to 7. They're still smiling, hoping that their Chargers can get right back in it. And there's the kid that can do it, Derek Perez, the junior quarterback who led the Chargers to that successful playoff run late in the season last year when he split time with Jordan Billups after Billups was injured. But he proved right there as a sophomore that the moment is not too big for him. And we'll see what he has here with 5.58 to play in the third. Fakes to Vela, throws over the middle to Fletcher again. Remember his speed. Malik Fletcher has one man, beats him. He's got to beat Bradford. Gives him a little stutter step. Bradford oh, pushes him down at the 15. That fumble, I think, was out of bounds. But anyway, there wasn't much of a mess made of it by the officials. But still a great play by Fletcher. Yeah, you cannot give this kid a free run at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Another dime from Perez. Great cutback to elude the first tackler, and then yeah, he was out of bounds. I beg your pardon. Way out of bounds by the time that ball left his hands. And I guess only a Millard Bradford can track down another track guy like Fletcher. They're in the Miracle Mattress red zone. Big play by the Chargers. Here's Vela across the 15. The amazing thing about Bradford, and we've been talking so much about him tonight, but when you go back and you watch those tapes, everybody is running like their hair's on fire, and he seems to be jogging. I mean, he's so fast that he doesn't even look like he's running hard. Was a favorite for the 100 meters in track last year. Playing both ways here tonight and ran down Fletcher, and we saw how fast Fletcher was earlier in the night. All right, here we go. Stick says second down. They fire out to the outside. Alva's got it. Jonathan Alva, the senior, near the stick. That's going to set up third down and one. Yeah, nice little out. Trying to reach for the sticks. And they did a really nice job lunging forward even after he got out of bounds to get that additional foot or two and make this a really close play on third and, I don't know, about less than a yard, right? About half a yard. Churchill really needs it down, 31-7. Keeping it is Perez. Perez to the one, gets a first down. They're going to mark him really actually at the three. Evan Villastrego with the tackle. Yeah, really nice job by the senior. Otherwise, that's going into the end zone. So Churchill's got new life here in the third, even though they trail 31 to seven. 4.15 to go. They've got first and goal. Diego Vela in the backfield with Alva and Perez. Perez the quarterback. Hands to Vela and Vela bulls his way in, but flags fly. No signal at all if he crossed. <laughs> yeah, I thought somebody moved before the snap, but I think somebody on the field thought so, too. Oh, and that's just a killer. You're on the three-yard line with first and goal against a very good defense, and now you're all the way back at the 12-yard line. Oh, see, this was a really nice bounce-back drug. You know, you had O'Connor... Basically had their most methodical drive of the night, and I say that it was not very many plays, but at least they kept everything in front of them. You have a chance to erase that seven points and well, you go backwards once you get it down by the goal line. Perez completes it. Austin Castilleja, but only gains about one. He's second down and goal from the nine. Trying to go a little bit more here with tempo as we wind down in the third quarter. And Castilleja, that's what he's really good at. An electrifying back out of the backfield. Another guy that's going to get some carries, too, for this team as the season goes along.
Fletcher in motion. Don't even look his way. Deep fade to the corner. Casilleja got tied up with the defender. And he just got overshot by Perez. That'll set up third down and goal now from the nine. From knocking on the door, a holding penalty putting you in a real bind. And so now I would think you take two shots at it if you're Churchill down 31 to seven. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Coach Harris plays this if indeed they don't get it on third and goal here because, you know, at some point you're going to need a field goal. So you can't necessarily win the game right here, but you might lose it. They run the football right up the middle with Castilleja. Of course, those corners are blanketed by two kids that are going to be playing at the next level in Taylor and Bradford. They're locking you down there on the corner. Well, you called it, Don. It looks like he's going for it on fourth down, and I think you could tell by that play call. It's like, okay, we're going to run it on third down because we know we're going to go for it on fourth down and maybe catch somebody by surprise by running it on third down. But O'Connor and those big guys up front were equal to the task there and limited that for not too many yards. So here we go. Perez rolling to his left. Beats the rush, fires, got nice. a hand, caught, touchdown, Fletcher. Just a great individual play by the quarterback, Perez. Had the speed to get outside and the touch to loft it over to the defenders to find Fletcher in the back of the end zone. Yeah, and if you think that Fletcher's just your average speed guy with better than average speed, you know, look at this guy and what he's able to do with route running and then really just finding open place to kind of set down and help his quarterback out. But again, you're right, not an easy throw for his quarterback rolling to his left, getting it over that line of defense. Foul zone, the lefty kicker. Will try to make it 31 to 14, and he does. So Churchill still within striking distance as we play off late in the third quarter. Good one at Comalander on Thursday Night Live. Tonight's game is sponsored by DNA Reference Lab. Ah, Winston Churchill High School, the pep rally today out in the courtyard. Great tradition there at Churchill. I went to my first Churchill pep rally in 1975. That's how old I am. Yeah, I wasn't even born, so that's... That's a long time ago, bro. <laughs> and out there all fired up. And the Chargers are fired up here now after scoring a touchdown to make it 31 to 14. Oh, what a great high school. The teachers and educators over there doing such a fantastic job with the kids year in and year out. And Mr. Fletcher doing a really nice job Finding some uncovered space in the back of that end zone and finding the ears on that pass. Fletcher's got 174 yards receiving and two touchdowns tonight as again the up man takes the kick. That's Lee. Hey, we want to tell you about our San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge powered by CPS Energy. You submit a photo of your school's cheer team. Tell us why they're the best. The top two vote getters. We'll get a $1,000 and a $500 grant. The top four squads will win the opportunity to cheer at the nationally televised U.S. Army All-American Bowl or the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB, both on Saturday, January 6th in the Alamo Dome. So register your squad today at the CW35.com. Chuck, your devil moon has gone away behind the clouds. I keep thinking of the Judas Priest song, Blood Red Sky. <laughs> Sanchez running option. Pitches over here to the near side to Bradford. And I don't know if Bradford took it or dished it out, but nice collision there with Colston Olsen. Yeah, Colston Olsen. And Churchill still bringing the wood here with 2.11 left to go in the third quarter. And, you know, honestly, Don, 
talked about how many explosive plays we've had in the game. And I think Churchill's done a really nice job. I mean, if you can limit some of those big plays, and I know that's, sure, ifs and buts, but you know, this is team. This is a team, as we said, this Churchill Charger team, and you know, they're trying to exact some revenge for the O'Connor win last year. Those are ball loose. Ball came out late. Churchill thinks they've got it. Waiting for a sign from the officials. No sign yet. Now it is. Charger ball. They're back in it. Yeah, but just to finish the thought, I mean, again, this is one of those teams that I don't know that we thought a lot of this year or last year at this time. And they ended up going a really long way in the playoffs and just a lot of activity, a lot of charges around the ball. Matt Elizondo just tugging on it there at the end, 36. Basically tackles the football and it comes loose. Yeah, it's hard to see exactly when it came out, but honestly, it doesn't matter. The refs have ruled they were down there, had a bird's eye view, and Matt Elizondo and company are in business. And as you can see, he's not only a football player, he's knocking them dead in the classroom too. Academic, all district, track guy, does everything but drive the bus around Churchill Country. That's our Texas silk screen and embroidery player profile as Elizondo not only caused it, he recovered it. Looked like Garza may have gotten it back just for a split second, but didn't control it the second time around. As Alva makes the catch right at the stick for another Churchill first down, and the Chargers are moving with purpose right now. Yeah, and earlier this week, we sent our cameras out to both schools to get a little preview for this game, and Mr. Alva did a nice job talking up his program earlier this week and on Max Sports and News 4. Yeah, very well-spoken young man as we look at the rampant lion. Other teams just have lion mascots. At Churchill, they have the rampant lion. I've been educated. Thank <laughs> you for the update, it's, Mr. Churchill. I'm sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> first down and 10. A Kielbasa first down look as out. Perez gets out of trouble, showing his speed across the 30. Made a little something out of nothing as Donovan McKnight was there to make the tackle. Yeah, we got a little comeback brewing here, and Derek Perez, I mean, you can't say enough about the play right there. We've talked about all the different looks that the O'Connor defense has given this young man tonight. I mean, there's nothing more disconcerting if you're a quarterback to see some guy running free right up the middle, right in your face, and just a nifty little sidestep. Then he's able to not only elude the tackle, but then tuck it up and get you four yards on the play. Hey, remember last week what happened. That's right. A little comeback action. Perez firing. That one's picked. Look out. Going the other way across the 40 to the 45-yard line is Donovan McKnight. He's tired of everybody talking about Miller Bradford and Zaire Taylor. He said, I'm going to make a play. Yep. Perez, though, looks like he threw it right at him. Yeah, I mean, they mixed up the defense and just went to his zone and just didn't see him. Again, I mean, you talk about this O'Connor defense and all of its great athletes, but you could tell how well these kids are coached because, man, they've just shown a bunch of different views to the quarterback. And the Churchill kids have a lot to look at when they're facing that O'Connor defense. It's got to be one of those adjustments. They ran that slant over and over to Malik Fletcher in the first half. Molesky gave him the same look, and then, as you said, rolled the zone over there. And it paid off as Sanchez keeps up the middle. He's got speed. He's got a first down on Kielbasa. Smoke meets first down as Theron Hayes is there to make the tackle. Yeah, and you see what happens. You know, they've, they've run that sweep a couple of times with Jalen Hughes. And all of a sudden, you fake it, and the world is your oyster. Right up the middle he goes, and the chains are moving right along with him. First and 10 for the Panthers, 45 ticks left here in the third. Churchill really missed an opportunity there after getting the ball back. Gars is not going anywhere. Good push by the interior front of the Churchill Chargers. Cameron Reyes up there making the tackle. Yeah, and I think what you know, Coach Molesky was telling us earlier this week, Don, is that you know, last week they got off to a little bit of a slow start, but he said, you know, our kids just never flinch. They don't get rattled. They don't get all riled up. They're just, 
They're really good at turning the page and really living for the moment. And we've kind of seen that tonight. You know, they had to settle for a field goal early, but they've been pretty methodical ever since. Flag flies right in the middle of the holding area, usually. The umpire threw it as Sanchez gets close to the stick, but I think that's coming back. That's right in that middle where they're watching the interior line. They'll talk it over, make sure they get it right. Brock Pittman's crew done a great job tonight. Yeah, as always. I mean, we've done these games a lot, and these guys have been spot on more often than not. There was a flag on the play. Illegal block, below the waist, on the offense, number 62, 15-yard penalty. Replay the down. We will extend the period by one play. All right, so it's an untimed down as the clock has already expired here in the third, but illegal chop block for an use of a better term has led to a 15-yard uh, penalty. Yeah, and I think, you know, football at every level, they're doing such a nice job of making sure they try to protect these athletes as best they can. Obviously, it's a, it's a contact sport. Nobody would deny that. But again, I mean, I think football in general is making strides to, to do everything it can to make sure that you know, these young men get a chance to play week in and week out, and not just a game here and a game there. All right, so we got one untimed down here in the quarter. They've already moved the change, so the chains are playing backwards here. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got to get the change right. <laughs> This might take a few minutes. Well, I guess you could just kind of do the math without They can move them. the down marker, but you got to move the chains because they can technically get a first down here on this on this play. And you'd have to measure it if it was close. And now it looks like, you know, if you got a bracelet or something in your jewelry box, and they get all tangled up. <laughs> you got to spend like five minutes trying to. This is one of the areas. The this is one of the areas where technology has got to improve in the, at the NFL level. I mean, we are still using chain links and referees eyeballing it. You know, when critical plays are being made, I say put chips in the footballs and, you know, and sensor, the sensors yeah. under the ground, down the sidelines. Look out. Jalen Hughes over the middle. Now he's looking for a block. Gets one, cuts back. Watch out. Jalen Hughes, another cutback, breaks another tackle. What? One man to beat. He's going to get to the oh, end zone. Yeah. Touchdown, O'Connor. Wow, Jalen Hughes. Oh, they did the old sucker punch. They let the defensive guys run free at the quarterback, and then you get an athlete in space, but <laughs> not one time, Don, when I'm watching this play unfold, did I think he was going to score. I thought he'd get the first down because he had those guys out in front blocking, but are you kidding me? It's broken tackle after broken tackle. And then right there at the end, the presence of mind to go airborne and lunge for the goal line. That was impressive. Wow, O'Connor, as the quarter expires, 38-14 over the Churchill Chargers. More to come the fourth quarter on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Why move the chains? <laughs> Welcome back, 56 yards. Jalen Hughes to make it 38 to 14. It's time to look at our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics highlights. And from the quarter, Roel Sanchez taking it in himself for a score there. And O'Connor getting back in it. Churchill kind of stemmed the tide when Malik Fletcher caught this one. Nice ball by Derek Perez. Looked like Churchill was going to kind of grab momentum back, but they had a turnover after this pick. Donovan McKnight with the Oski. And then Jalen Hughes with the individual effort to Fend off tackler after tackler. 
Watch him dive for the goal line at the very end. Ball comes out, but Brown can't cause a fumble. Touchdown, Panthers. Uh, I tell you, Don, it was absolutely impressive. That whole thing, I mean, waiting for some of those blocks to occur, and then, you know, guys like Cameron Chavez on the offensive line, I mean, those guys were down by the 15-yard line helping to spring them the rest of the way. I mean, that was something to behold. Austin Castilleja is a speedy athlete, but he can't get out of the blocks because of a nice tackle. You guys might have a player of the week. Oh, I think so. I think we have a number of candidates tonight. We've got that. We've got those hits. You know, Derek Perez, still another great game for him. I mean, obviously, he'd like to have that last throw on the last possession back, but, you know, he's... He's just been unbelievable. I mean, to, to start the season the way he did, perfectly against Clark, and then to come out hot and slinging it again tonight, you know, he's done a lot of things individually where you know, you know, and just think what's going to happen as the year goes along. He's handed to Castilleja up the middle. And Churchill's got the good running game, too, and nice one-two punch with Vela and Castilleja. Yeah, this is one of those teams, too. Again, we talked about this last year. I don't know what we thought of Churchill this time last year. I knew they'd be good, but, you know, they just kind of went about their business quietly. And then next thing you know, I mean, they're one of the last two teams standing in the entire area. So, you know, they had a tough game against these guys last year. And it just goes to show you a, a season is not won or lost in just one game. Bella's got a kielbasa. Smoke meets first down. Nice, tough run. Physical play there. Diamond Rios makes the tackle. Yep. Special season for the Chargers a year ago. A lot of emotion with the loss of their good friend Josh Pollard. You can see on the helmet there, right above the face mask in light blue, you see some letters. I'm gonna, we're going to zoom in on that in a second, and I'll explain that. LLJP. as they hand off straight ahead. Uh, they still carry the 12 flag out. Now, remember last year they had the WC on one side of the helmet and the 12 on the other. But these kids were uh, juniors with Josh's senior class a year ago, so there's still a lot of really close friends to Josh Pollard. And light blue was Josh Pollard's favorite color. And LLJP means live like Josh Pollard, which was the big theme at his memorial service and Josh was just a fantastic young man Churchill community still mourning his loss yeah Bella we talked about that last line year of scrimmage sorry but, no you're good I mean we were talking about that last year during the Gucci Bowl and you know we talked about the Churchill kids and even the Clark kids because there's so many of these kids that you know played Little League together mm -hmm. played Pee Wees together and so, I mean, it, it was tough, and Josh's influence and his scope was so broad. You know, it, it was more than, and sure, of course, you know, you can't discount what it did to the Churchill community, but really to a lot of people. You know, the Pollards touched, and, and Josh did too, and yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of cool that they're, they're still doing a little of that. Absolutely, as Miller Bradford dives for Anoski. Oh my goodness. He has now officially done it all in one game. He's got an interception, a receiving touchdown, a rushing touchdown, or a rushing uh, carry. He's got a special teams return. And he just, we we're just looking at two huge hits. What is he not doing, Chuck? I don't know. Uh, give me about 30 seconds during this break and maybe I'll be able to figure something out. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Don, I had about a minute to kind of think about this, so I was going to say something trite like he's done everything but drive the bus, but during the commercial break, he actually went down to the DMV, got his bus driver's <laughs> license, and after the ball game, he will be officially driving one of the buses home. 
So yeah, he's done it all tonight. You know, I haven't seen Caden Stearns at Steel play since his sophomore year. And I'm looking forward to seeing him this year as look out, look still out. on his feet and still going past the 45 with Zion Taylor. But Caden Stearns is rated as the top DB in all of Texas, signed or committed to UT. And again, I haven't seen him since he was a sophomore. But he's going to have to show me something to tell me that he's better than Miller Bradford from what I've seen tonight. Uh, as Bradford is a TCU offeree along with Houston. But this is the best player I've seen in San Antonio in the last couple of years. I mean, I saw John Williams last week for Judson, as spectacular as he was, with uh -oh. balls on the ground. And I think O'Connor got it back. But tell me if I'm wrong, but that's, this kid is special. Well, I mean, I, they're both really obviously tremendous players but it just goes to show you i mean they're, they're players all over this field that are going to be playing next level as yeah. we take a look at our tnl schedule in the weeks ahead looking forward to going to bernie we were there a couple of years ago about three years ago when we saw quentin dormity play for the greyhounds and he led tennessee to a big time win on national tv against georgia tech the other night going to go back out to bernie see our friend stan leach taking on brandeis that's next week on a great schedule of, of TNL. Face mask central. <laughs> yeah, flag flies on that face mask as Zion Taylor was brought down. Jet Collins didn't mean to, but I think he got him. Yeah, young sophomore Zion Taylor getting a mouthful there in more ways than one, but we talked about it, Don. I mean, you could. On the defense, number 88, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You talk about the skill level about the DBs on this field tonight, but yeah, we talked about Churchill's offensive line and they got a young man going to Rice and Brandon Brown number 75 for O'Connor and all the scholarship offers that he's having to wade through and then on the other side for O'Connor number 71 Logan Parr just a sophomore he's already gotten two D1 offers so you know he's I think 15 we've kind of seen <laughs> he's gotten 15 he's offers 15 years oh, old. okay I was gonna say well, yeah, he's he probably will have 15 offers old. by the end of this game yeah but yeah, I mean, it's it's astounding, and I know we've seen it through the years, the quality of athlete that is being produced in this area is something that we haven't seen in our lifetime. And, you know, I don't know that we're at the level of Dallas and Houston yet, but I think it's pretty safe to say we're closing the gap, and a lot of schools are finding out that this is an area that is really under-harvested in yeah. terms of talent level. I think per capita, we might be close. Of course, so many great athletes in those two huge metropolitan areas. But I can tell you this, they aren't coached any better anywhere than they are in San Antonio. Amen. The, the, uh, the level of coaching in this town, both northeast, north side, uh, and, and in sure, Cibolo sure. shirts. And yeah. SAISD, you could go right down the list. They're, I mean, I know, you know, no matter where you go in town, when coaches are being hired, they are all being hired to win and to win district championships. Yep. So, I mean, you can see it. I mean, we talked about what Coach Juan did at Highlands the last couple years, and now how that has been, it's carried over now with what Hank Willis is doing and what they were doing tonight. I mean, it, it's a mindset, and you can tell when teams have been coached. Hand off inside. Zion Taylor now getting the Zion getting the Lion share of the carries. Yeah, and I mean in the Harlandales and the McCollums and everywhere else where, you know, nobody's conceding anything when they go into the season. And that's what's so beautiful about this time of year. And that's why we love these matchups because in the grand scheme of things, they really won't mean much when we're playing four or five weeks from now. But it is great to see that we get this you know, a great matchup like we had tonight and like last week, and you get to kind of see what these guys are all about early on in the season. Second down, fire, caught, touchdown O'Connor. Grayson Lee, he scored earlier when he scooped up Bradford's leftovers on the one. This one is all Lee. Nice strike from Sanchez yeah, we, over the middle. And we talk about college level guys, and we, I mean, mentioned briefly earlier about Grayson Lee where he kind of showed up at the O'Connor doorstep as a junior and then really torched the JV kids last year, as you might imagine. He's a track guy, and this guy 
has a chance to be a dual sport college athlete as well, not only in football, but also in track because he can run and do all kinds of stuff, jump. Elite Triple level jump, athletes, that's jump. right. Yep. Lots of stuff going on at O'Connor with these athletes, y'all. As a proud Churchill Charger, it pains me to say this one's all O'Connor, but boy, are they impressive. 45-14 Panthers as we play on here in the fourth. Say it on the air. Oh. Welcome back, O'Connor leading Churchill 45 to 14. Nice drive by the Panthers. Six plays, taking up 331 of the clock. Grayson Lee on the receiving end of that touchdown. And we've talked so much about Bradford and Taylor and Sanchez and the offensive lineman Brown and Parr. But Grayson Lee's another one of those guys that just athletes all over the place. So is this kicker Michael Lissing, who's first team all district. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking about Grace and Lee. I mean, I, I jipped the kid. I mean, he went to the state track meet in the long jump, and then Coach Muskie was telling me, you know, he really saw a lot when the O'Connor 7-on-7 seven seven team went to the state tournament, and he really showed up nicely there. And you can imagine with his ability to jump and run how that played. But, you know, they've got a little bit of a raw guy out there, but what a compliment. And you can imagine you know, as this season goes along, he's going to get more and more acclimated to what's going on with this offense. I mean, that's another huge weapon outside for O'Connor to match all the other athletes that they've got going on at that school. As we take a look at the defense that's out there, Zaire Taylor is still on the field. Bradford is not. Maleski is going to go with the, a lot of the second teamers, a lot of the younger guys now going to get some snaps. Churchill still running out their first unit down 45-14 with just a couple of possessions left for the Chargers. 5.40 to go. Inside handoff. That's Castilleja trying to bounce it. Gets to the corner, but he's going to be shoved out of bounds by Zaire Taylor. Yeah, nice run. Hey, Chuck, it's time for the uniform czar observation of the night. And I'm gonna actually have a little criticism of my own Churchill Chargers. Now, I love the O'Connor uh, uniforms, always have. Churchill, all black, is not my thing. I like when they go with the white pants. And here's the other thing that they've changed to the Churchill uniform lately, the, the black uniform there. The stripe that's on their helmet, the white, red, white stripe, that should go over the shoulders, like UCLA's jerseys, the shoulder stripe. That's the way they always had it, it's traditional. You go with the black jersey, the white pant, and then that stripe both on the shoulders and down the side of the white pant. All right, we'll agree to disagree because I'm gonna tell you why. The all black is very heavy metal, and I'm down with it. I know you're down with that. You gotta, I like it, I just don't like the word Churchill down the side of the pant. I, I kinda dig that I like too. a stripe. But I'm gonna tell you, I mean, you go to any metal show, you get any concert t-shirts, they're always black. Yeah. You cannot go wrong with black. And I know when I was at Churchill, I wore concert shirts. But that was 1980, <laughs> 81. I'm not saying I'm wearing any concert shirts, I've got but a, I do go to a lot of concerts, I, and <laughs> black is cool. It's actually not a bad look. I'm just being tough on the Chargers. I'd like to see the shoulder stripe come back. Uh, and I'd like to see a more traditional number font. But that's just me. You know, to each his own. Yeah. So is each. That WC on the side of that black helmet, that's still it's a the best logo in town. All right. First and 10 for the Chargers. As Perez runs, tries to pick his way and does. Nice little directing of traffic there by Nick Perez to get to the 40. Yeah, you know, we I don't know if we've talked up enough about Derek Perez and the job that he did last year. I mean, to come in and, you know, after your starting quarterback goes down and you're in the playoffs, and this kid is getting thrown to the Wolves and looking the part. Yeah, I mean, they did. didn't miss a beat with yeah. that kid. So, I mean, I guess we shouldn't be astonished that he's gotten off to such a quick start this year because, man, when you can prove that you can play when, man, everything's going against you and, Look at the bullets are flying. There's nothing wrong with the slant throw on this Churchill Charger team. But, I mean, 
it tells you a lot about this kid's moxie and his mental makeup. Brandon Sparrow on the reception as he throws another fastball on that slot from the left side. You know, we love our Jordan Billups around here. So, and we knew what kind of player he was. And of course, he's playing baseball at the next level. But well, I'll tell you what, Churchill doesn't go as far as they go if that young man doesn't have the kind of season that he had and stepped up in the moment. That's a Kiyobasa smoke meets first down as Fletcher comes in motion on the jet sweep. He's got it. He's got about three or four. Mark Kusenberger, after that last completion, writing down that we need to keep your eye on the sparrow. <laughs> Being number nine. Whoa. And you missed it earlier, my tribute to Gary DeLon. I said, Zion's getting the Lions share oh, nice. of the carries. All right, but, but I was trying to think of the Gary last is reference. Just two, two, our next door neighbor yeah. here tonight on the radio, the legendary Gary DeLon, and that was just for him. It was, but was that the Beretta theme song? Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> See, I didn't miss that from back in 1902. <laughs> Keep your eye on the spur. Nice, Mark. Very nice. Keeping us on our toes. Rolling to his right as Perez fires, has a man through it a little bit behind the intended receiver. Looking for Seth Queso. It's just so tough. I mean, there's so much speed on the side of the O'Connor Panthers. I mean, we saw it right there. You got Isaiah Stockton running around back there, a sophomore wreaking havoc, getting a chance to play. And you know, we talked about overall the youth of this O'Connor defense, but you know, that was another unit that I think kind of grew up as the season went along. And boy, they just have so many playmakers back there you can integrate and sprinkle in some younger guys because there's just so many guys on the back end that can really hurt you and make big plays. My apologies, that was Seth Casso, not Queso. Queso was what our, sp our spotter Derek was eating at halftime. And, when, and failed to share with <laughs> any of us. When we come back, it's Churchill 45, or O'Connor 45, Churchill 14. Our pick and pull, oh, collision of the game. Miller Bradford, what has he not done tonight? That's our pick and pull, collision of the game. We're coming right back on Hallmark University, Thursday Night Lights. Welcome back to Comalander Stadium. Beautiful Thursday night. Remember, our Spouts Farmers Market $5,000 band grant. If you were impressed with the O'Connor band, just text band three to 44332. The Churchill band is band four to 44332. One of the bands at the end of the year is gonna get that $5,000 band grant courtesy of Sprouts Farmers Market. Third down and six for O'Connor, or for Churchill rather. Knock it on the door inside the 20, Perez fires, Castilleja just can't hang on to it, it was a little high, and that was going to be a key conversion opportunity there for the Chargers that's lost. Vega doing it, Vela doing a very nice job picking up the blitz right there too, because you know, he was probably one of those guys that was also going to be a receiver on that play, but his first job is to make sure that if somebody's blitzing, you got to pick him up, and he did just that. Gave his quarterback a chance to make a completion. So Churchill will go for it here on fourth down, down 45-14. 3.29 left. Probably going to be their last opportunity in the night. Perez going to run it up the middle, and he's going to get there. First down, nice effort by Derek Perez. Yeah, we talked about this kid's moxie, and I mean, you're seeing it on display. Here you are, it's fourth and long. You're inside of four minutes of this football game. You're not gonna win, but you know what? He won that play. And that's the kind of stuff that, you know, you're gonna get a lot of credit for in the film room, and that's the other thing that's gonna make other guys wanna follow you into battle every Friday night. Good stuff. First and 10, looking over the middle. Just a little too much zip on that one. As again, he was throwing that slant. Seth Casso, the intended receiver. So we tick down inside of three minutes. Let's see if the Chargers can finish off this drive. And 
might give a little feather in their hat, something to build off of for next week. So they wait for the play to come in, but can't say enough about the job that the O'Connor Panthers did tonight. And Coach Molesky and his crew, his coaching staff, getting this team ready to play a really good football team. Perez over the middle, one-on-one -on -one coverage, interference going to be called as the intended receiver for Churchill was blanketed. Liam Capobianco was just breathing all over him was O'Connor's Tate Kasurik. America's Diamond Smile Cam on full display tonight. Churchill, Churchill ladies still have a little something to smile about. It's a Thursday night to stay up late past their bedtime. I mean, what kid doesn't like that? It's Thursday night. They're still having a great time. Good unis, by the way. A lot of sparkle. Yeah, that's what's so great about Hallmark University, Thursday night lights. Well, camera time for everybody. Inside handoff, Vela walks in. Touchdown, but again, a flag flies. That might be a hold. I think you're right. On the offense, number 82, 10 yard penalty. No, first down. Coach Harris. <laughs> He's trying to find a little something to smile about and, and again, you gotta love a head coach who wears his hat back. Yeah, right. And not only that, like I said, you can look at this game and you just that's all it is. It's one game. And you know what? I was gonna make that point is this is a Churchill team that will still be a very good ball club throughout the rest of the oh, season. Oh, there's no question. We got a lot of these guys got playoff experience last year and a whole lot of it. I mean, that's what you know, you hope to achieve when you're building a program. It's like, okay, if we can get into the tournament, how much damage can we do once we get there? And they proved that they could do that last year. They're and knocking I, on the door yeah, here. Yeah, and I mean, Coach Harris, you know, he was sandbagging a little bit to me before the game. I asked him, hey, man, was there any magic? And he goes, yeah, a lot of it's a luck of the draw. But, hey, man, when you make a run as deep as they did, it tells you a little bit about the staff and the players and the kids that are making it all happen. Absolutely. They had to make some clutch plays at big times late in games last year with sophomore backups coming in and for injury and sure so yeah they they've seen the pressure they'll get into district play and they'll be just fine remember this o'connor team might be one of the best two teams in the city one or two or three right there with judson and steel that'll yeah. be played out later in the year in fact they'll play steel next week Vela's lunging for the end zone. Did he get there? No signal know. yet. Either way, they'll go for it on fourth down. They're going to signal fourth down just short of the goal line. Clock ticks inside of 130. And Diego Vela is earning his money tonight. Coach, how about one more time? Let this kid get the reward. Yeah, I mean, look at his right arm. Blood, sweat, and tears. There's a little bit of that all in one little space. 12th play of this drive. Diego Vela was a really good player a year ago for the Chargers, really came on, and here they go on fourth down. Ball's and loose. Ball was loose, and it's not going to matter. It's O'Connor football either way. Got a good goal line stand there for some of these young Panthers to get a chance to you know, maybe get on the field for the first time in their varsity career. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, O'Connor will snap it once or twice, Max, and walk out of here with a 45-14 win and setting up a heck of a matchup next week with the Steel Knights. Yeah, and I know, you know, it's one of the things I appreciate about Coach Molesky. I mean, he's got a good team, and he's not afraid to talk about the fact that he knows they're good. I mean, he says, you know, this senior class that we've had, they had a lot of success as freshmen. They beat the Reagans. They beat the Steels. So they've, they've experienced victory in big games, and they really feel like they can do it every single time they get out on the football field. They may not do it, but they really believe that they can, and he feels like this group reveals it 
each and every week. And, you know, they lost to Judson the last couple of years in the playoffs, but, you know, once you get there, man, you got to have some luck. And as we take a look at our Texas silk screen and embroidery player profile, Chris Roper, one of those kids that we're so proud of in the community, all district, senior linebacker performer, member of parliament. And, you know, that's one of those things you got to like about these coaches. They're building football players, but they're also building young men that, you know, hopefully you're going to do on great, do great things the rest of their lives. And when you see the kids like Roper achieving what they are doing now, you know the sky's the limit. Well, that'll be the last snap of the football game. O'Connor wins it 45 to 14. Great effort from Coach Ron Harris and his Chargers. They'll be having to be reckoned with in District 26. And as usual, David Molesky's squad, every bit as advertised here tonight on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Line them up, shake hands. And these are two teams that we're going to be looking for big things from the rest of the season. Before we go to break, let's show you our Night Office Solutions Play of the Night. Our thanks to Mitch Huffman and the folks over at Night Office Solutions. Jalen Hughes on that slant, doing everything that he could as a one-man pinball machine, breaking through and diving for that touchdown late. Jalen Hughes, fantastic athletic ability. That is our Night Office Solutions play of the night. When we come back, we'll hand out the hardware, our player of the game, and we'll give the TNL trophy away, Coach Molesky and his squad, when we come back. Welcome to the Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights post-game report. The O'Connor Panthers big time tonight over Churchill, 45 to 14. Mike Hernandez ready to hand out the hardware with the victorious Panthers, Mike? Yes, I am. How about them Panthers, huh? Yeah! Great game, great game, 45-14. You guys played a very tough Churchill team, I want you to know, and they're gonna go far into the playoffs as well, and I expect you guys to do the same from what I saw tonight. I'm gonna talk to Coach here in just a second, but first, I wanna talk about our player of the game. This guy was busy tonight, you guys were all good, but I'm gonna highlight this young man. Had two of the biggest hits tonight on the field. Had a 34-yard touchdown catch, blocked a field goal in return. Had an INT and an interception as well. I'm talking about your number seven senior, Millard Bradford. Congratulations, man. Let me give you your trophy. There you go. So how you doing? Good. You're a pretty busy guy. Uh, it's my team. It's my team. I play for my team. I do everything for my team. Uh, it's, it's like you had another gear tonight. It's like we were talking about it during the game. It's like everybody's running real hard and you're like doing this. But you're there with them, you know? <laughs> it's like you have a whole nother gear there. So that's great. Yes, sir. Um, I give all the credit to the teams, defense, and that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put you on the spot here now. I know you got TCU, and I know you got Houston looking at you pretty hard. What do you think? Uh, I'm not ready to make my decision yet until Signing day. All right, buddy, all right. Hey, how about a hand for Millard? Yeah. Coach, congratulations, man. They look tough. You got so much talent on both sides of the ball. There, yeah, no question. We, we, we've got, uh, I think, a chance to have a pretty good football team, but, uh, you know, we, we're not real satisfied except for the win tonight. And, and, and that's early season. You know, you don't want to be playing great football. And we made some mistakes tonight. And let me tell you what, Churchill's got a really good football team. Yes, they and, do. and they came out and they're going, they, I'm glad we only play them once, you, you know, and, and they're going to they're gonna do really well. And, and they showed some weaknesses in what we're doing, but we also did a lot of good things tonight. So we're going to build on that and try to fix the things that, that, that we need to get corrected. All right, well, good. And good luck next week. I know you got another tough game yes, uh, we next do. week against Steele, so good luck on that one. I want to go ahead and present you our Thursday Night Lights champion trophy, and I'll let you present it to your team. Winners tonight, your O'Connor Panthers, 45-14.
All right, thanks, Mike. There's a team that's not satisfied with just winning a regular season game on a Thursday. They want to hoist the one at AT&T Stadium. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Thursday Night Lights. O'Connor over Churchill, 45 to 14. Time for our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics highlights. It all got started with the Bradford return, although he dropped it on the one yard line and Lee scooped it up and scored. Nice night on the ground for Roel Sanchez and through the air. Malik Fletcher had a big game with two touchdowns for the Churchill Chargers. They got to within striking distance a couple of times, but every time they would get close, it would be more of that guy. Millard Bradford on offense, scoring on the touchdown catch. Sanchez throwing it to him. Sanchez running for more scores. And O'Connor just pulled away late. There's Fletcher's second touchdown of the night. Again, that looked like Churchill might get some momentum there, but they had a turnover. And then Jalen Hughes kind of broke their spirit with this play. Our night off the solutions play of the night as he went as a one-man show all the way down. And those are our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics highlights of the night. Chuck, you look at the final uh, statistics as you would expect. Pretty dominating performance uh, by O'Connor, even though Churchill did show signs of, of having a bright season ahead of them. No question, and I think really what happened where I think this game got decided was O'Connor's second drive of the second half. They were kind of methodical running the ball. They ran a couple of end of rounds, and then they were able to gash him up the middle. And then all of a sudden, you know, the playbook kind of opened up for him, and they were really able to dominate this game offensively from that point on. And then they had some big plays mixed in along the way. All right, coming up next week, we're really excited about going out to Bernie again. It's Brandeis and champion. Uh, the champion Chargers always in the hunt in the playoffs as well. And we're looking forward to seeing them. Brandeis, another school from the Northside District that is will contend for a playoff spot. That's coming up next week on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. And we've got a full weekend of football for you, including, Chuck, a nice doubleheader on Fox San Antonio. Oh, yeah, the old Northeast School District slugfest between Philadelphia and Washington kicking us off at noon. And then the late game I'm looking forward to, Seattle and your Green Bay Packers. And we're fired up to kick off the season of Sunday Night Football on News 4 San Antonio. We've got Football Night in America at 6, followed by the Giants and Cowboys at 7, and then basically a Cowboys postgame show from 10 all the way to 11.30 on News 4 San Antonio, Sports Sunday, and SA Sports Nation. So tune in after the Cowboys. Don't go anywhere. For Brian Watts and Chris Kotfuss, and up here in the booth, Chuck McAtenick, Mike Hernandez on the sidelines, our spotter Derek Machen, and our statistician extraordinaire, Mark Kusenberger, who always makes me look smart like I know numbers when I don't. We're going to see you next time on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. So long, everybody.